Inconsistent. First of all, you sound like a potato. What? Yeah, yeah. Like a muffled potato. I sound like a muffled potato. It sounds like you have a potato in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, so- Mike sounds excited about that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> a nice big potato. <laughs> So that, that, that's pretty much what I'll sound like for you guys, but I'm using the other microphone to record my audio. And you guys Oh, are, you're recording? So one microphone is recording me, and the other microphone is connected to the Bluetooth device that we're talking out of. Oh, we're not a Zoom? If you want to join the Zoom call, I'll send you the link, and you could join on your computer if you want to, like, show something or... Oh... Uh, not really, because okay. then I gotta put a shirt on. You see, all, all that, right, yeah, yeah. All that's not necessary. I was gonna. All right, all right. All I right. just shaved my chest. You just shaved your chest? No, don't don't get excited now, Jose. You decided an audio call. We're gonna stick to an audio. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay. Yo, Mike. So you know what I did? Yesterday I bought a bunch of stocks and a few um marijuana companies. Nice. But there's no there's not much in America. No, not yet. But the ones that you're investing in, think about it. Ten, twenty years down the line, you're investing right now in a in one of the earliest companies, right? So if once this thing becomes legal on a federal scale. It's about to be. Oh, it's going. It's going. It, this month it goes to the to the house. I think. Exactly. So, what's going to happen is your stock is going to look crazy in like five years. Five years, like you're going to be like, "Wow! Thank God I listened to this pothead." It's like anything else. If you would have invested in Amazon, I mean, uh, Netflix back or Amazon back in the early two thousands, you would have been made right now. No, nigga, you didn't hear what happened. The split, they, they split, uh, like Tesla right now went from, um, what was it, like, like, it, like two grand a stock, then it went down all the way to like $46, no, no, what was it, uh, what am I talking about, it went down to, let me see, what was it, uh, Four hundred and twenty dollars went down. And now it's back up. So if you would have invested, let's say, last on the twenty sixth at four twenty, your profit would have been right now it's four hundred and seventy six dollars And Apple right now Is he expecting us to do math? <laughs> well uh, um on a Google, right? Is Google is Alphabet? Oh, you know, so Apple opened up again at $108 a stock. Now it's at $129 a stock. So right now, I mean, $134 a stock. So right now is really the best time to invest in Apple. Yo, you know, in, um, in Robinhood, you don't have to buy the whole stock. Right, right. You can buy partial stock. But I like to buy full stock, like. Because once you buy full stock, you're dealing with full increase in the revenue. Like if you buy, let's say, three, four, you know, you're multiplying your your income. This stock is not supported. Oh, excuse me. Jeez. Why did you just show me? Why does Jose sound like somebody? Yo, the uh, upstairs, they're um the the people moved out, so they're <laughs> they're clearing out the the apartment. So I'm gonna just roll in my stuff because it's it's dangerous upstairs. It sounds like they're moving bodies around. Right. <laughs> 
They're hiding people in the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> like the good Germans did to the Jews, except the Jews were alive. All right, on that note, what is going <laughs> on? Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, not catch coronavirus. Yo, my dude, congratulations. You're a daddy now. Has it sunk in yet? Have y'all seen Yo, the doctor? Yo, thanks. He's not a daddy yet, yeah. Put it like this. I, I probably cried for like three days straight. <laughs> Every time I was like, oh, fine. you know, it's done now. That cry is over. <laughs> and I just start crying again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> she's not She's not pregnant? No, yeah, she is pregnant. Oh, t- what the uh, hell? Now it's, been, it's been a week since we found out. We're waiting for our appointment, our doctor's appointment. And we're thinking we're way deeper than uh, we... You know what I'm saying? Like, then it might, then we might be thinking. Yeah. You know, because certain symptoms are happening already that shouldn't happen until later on. In pregnancy. So, yeah, man. <laughs> Call me Daddy Mike, boys. <laughs> So basically, you don't yep. know how far along you are in the process. Yeah, we don't know yet. We're uh, waiting on the uh, uh, appointment, doctor's appointment. Okay. Um, yeah, for some, I guess because of the COVID situation, like there, it's like a huge waiting list. I don't know why. So the last time we were on this platform. I don't know what we were talking about, and I have everything geared up to publish that episode, but I figured this would just be a continuation from then. It was like maybe three or four months ago, so it'll be interesting to see if any perspectives has changed, to see if anybody has grown since then in this little group or changed their perspective. We're like, what, 50, 45 days till November 3rd? What is it, three months? Yeah. Yeah, you guys, I'm going to be honest, you guys convinced me, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, I, I understand and I understand the side of white supremacy now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes your <laughs> That's, that's your cue, Noel. <laughs> that's when you chime in, Noel. Well, well, they got a point. All the, all the, uh. All the good countries are the quote unquote good countries that uh, that you want to move to are white. How many countries are free, like have freedom? All the white countries. That's it, man. Only white people are allowed to be Only the whites are allowed to be free. Yeah, in this world, I mean, granted, like China, in all reality, it's communist country, but it's all about the Chinese. You know, but because it's a communist country, they cater a lot to white people. Right. So in all reality, the Chinese hold themselves down. What do you mean they cater themselves to white people? They they cater uh, a lot to white people. Like um, if you look at uh, what's going on right now in China, uh, most people they don't they don't hang out with you if your skin is a certain color, you know, and um, they do a lot of things like uh, like the Chinese in China have a lot of things that they would clear out the Chinese people so that they can cater to the rich white people that are visiting, the business people or whatever. They got like, it, it's just, there's a lot of different racial things going on out there. I was you watching like, a rich black person. Do you think if a rich black person would go there, they would also cater to them? Nah. Crazy? So if somebody, so if somebody nah, nah. respect the money. Wait a minute. You mean, to me, you mean to tell me that if Will Smith goes over there, they're not going to cater to him? Bro, that's Will Smith, my nigga. Anybody with, yo, he can bring peace to the Taliban. 
I just think it has, more, it has more to do with money, I think, than, than I mean, I don't, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know enough about China. Even. It oh, does. I, um, I just when I see the way people, you know, in a daily way people move, it's all about money. Yeah, I was watching basically how they they uh, bleach their skins out there. They're into like bleaching, and that's why some Chinese people they're very white and not yellow anymore. They're like they're about bleach. Yeah. Out this Everybody, I mean, all countries do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, I was watching that about Jamaica, too. Jamaican. The uh, Dominican Republic is bigger than that, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jose does that, too. If I did that, if <laughs> I did video. that, I would, I would literally invent a new white because I'm already, like, disgustingly white. It's hard to it's hard to tan. It hurts. Duele, duele mucho. They my bleach. They my bleach out your skin. I don't. So th- when I see like women like do Botox, and it's so obvious, right? It looked like a bee stung their lip, you know, forever. And it's like, oh gosh, it's so bad. Oh, I'm like, yeah. what? What? Because what made you think? Well, I, I at don't first, understand what people think of things. Yeah, I, I, well, well, because at just... first, but then when it, you know, it heals up, you know, you look like a more of a, a, what they want you to look like in the movie. Wait, wait, when does it heal up? Because I haven't seen one person heal up from that crap. Not one. That's some long-term healing. You didn't, you didn't see what happened to uh, Michael Jackson? I don't. I don't know what happened to Michael Jackson. I don't even know if Michael Jackson, the kid, is the same person as Michael Jackson, the adult. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. You know, you want to talk about conspiracy theories? You know what I'm saying? And, and let's let's be for real. Did he really die? He he, nigga. He he, nigga. I, I have no idea. I mean, you know, it's one of the, it's one of those things. That that basically that's like my fundamental that. At the end of the day, you really can't prove any of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just take care of you. Yeah, at go. the end of the day. Uh, like, none of us ever met this nigga before. We have no idea anything about him. He could have been a fake person who's all these years made up in history, and we have no idea. Right. Killed probably like four times. Four different Michael yeah. Jackson. You know, God knows how many Michael Jackson. That's yeah, cool. that nigga never, never yeah. ends. That whole idea. There's a, there's yeah, a conspiracy cool. theory that... Um, the, the what's the name of the nigga that wrote Romeo and Juliet? Shakespeare. There's this conspiracy theory that Shakespeare was never a person. That right, right, right. Four authors or something like that mixed that yeah. wrote together. Yeah, but we would never know. Just like uh, the Bible. Yeah, yeah I'm just like the Bible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but that goes back to what we were saying about being in the information age. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think. We have so much information that we don't know what facts from fiction anymore. Because they make the fiction out to be so factually nice looking. It looks like it can be factual, the, the, the lie. The, you know, they, I don't know, man. There's some good editors out there. Doing the thing, you think? Correct. They're just doing it right. Doing them. Like, look at the videos where they've been sitting up. Right, right, right. Like he puts his face on Beyonce. Yeah, and he loves, that's the future. He loves that's the future. <laughs> that's the future. <laughs> yeah, that's your future. That's the, that's kind of the future you want. That's because yeah, you like the way I look as a female. Well, Don't, just say it. Just say it. Just say it. Nobody's listening. Nobody. Nobody listens to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say something that might be a little offensive, but it's the truth. All right. <laughs> Yo, if you were a girl, bro, you would look exactly like your baby mom. <laughs> I'm not even joking, bro. I was like, I was like, did he feel his baby mom's face? I was like, no, no, that's him. I was like, that make him look like his baby mom. So now I'm gonna go back to drinking, thanks to Mike, ladies and gentlemen. We're no, here no, 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 no. But you gotta admit that Shakira, what was it? <laughs> wow, I can see it. That looked just 
You know what it is? I didn't Bro. realize how big my nose is. I got like a Mohong nose. That it's it's crazy. Wow. Yeah. You're Puerto Rican. That Puerto is, Ricans, we got big. We got them big ass noses. Even though my mom's nose was small, like Michael Jackson. Going back to Michael Jackson. Um, but nah. Yeah, it's a crazy world we live in, though, right? It almost seems like the way we lived before was far fetched. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like we talk about the things like it was just a joke. You know, we would jokingly say a lot of things that like became real. Like, for example, uh, like, like. Like going back to before FaceTime, before, you know, like every little thing we were like, man, I wish we could do this or I wish I could just do that. You know, remember just talking to your friends being poor on the block, like, <laughs> talking about the things you were wishful for. And look at where we are. 2020, we're able to literally do almost all those things. Uh. Yo, did you hear about? Um, I think they, I think they fixed it because everybody was going crazy. So you know, Joe Rogan moved over to Spotify exclusively, um, starting today or yesterday. I forget what it was. Yeah. So some of they the, moved did over. Did you see the yesterday. studio that he has? Did you see the studio? Yeah, yeah. So it's weird. I feel like that's so different from what he has now. It's like totally different. But um, but Joe Rogan has. Like, no, Spotify is free. I mean, the podcast is free on Spotify. Oh. But they're, they're, Spotify's hope is that you move over there for your podcast and then wind up doing other stuff there. So they can charge you. you oh, I'm, I use Spotify for everything else. I might as well just get a, a subscription. That's the whole subscription. You said it right. Yeah. You go to the doctors and give <laughs> you. So, um, so Joe Rogan, well, like 1,500 episodes, they moved it, all of them over to Spotify. But some of them were missing. And only ones that were missing were the ones with uh, either controversial guests or right-wing guests. And everybody's like, how suspicious that these are the episodes that are missing? But people started wilding out on, on uh, Instagram and, and Twitter or whatever. So they're saying look like they're back. Like, what? They were, like they, what you're saying is that they were trying to like control what his narrative is, like basically what Not YouTube just, and basically, yep. So, but they, they were they weren't even they, the whole episodes were gone, full on episodes, and like specific ones that that have controversial guests, like Star God of a Cod or jo, um, or with Alex Jones, people like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um. So they were like, "This is so suspicious that these are the only ones that are missing." But it, let me let me check because I was just reading something. They were like, "Oh, the basic Spotify was like, oh, we were having trouble uploading this episode." But it's like so suspicious these, and you only put them on after people got banned. That's suspicious. And what has Joe Rogan com- has Joe Rogan comment on it at all? No, I don't see anything that he commented on it. Let me see if I can find. Um, uh, Joe Rogan. There's something you don't know about me, Joe Rogan. A small fox. <laughs> 1255. That's the episode. Episode 1255. And he's on episode like 15 something now. Hmm. Hold on a second. Did I pass that? So remember for a while back I was telling you guys that I planted a, a little garden? Yeah. Uh-oh. So I, I planted it. And I never really paid attention to it. Uh, <laughs> I came back and now I got a, a little, uh, I got a huge um, tomato tree growing, little tomato oh, bush, like, whatever. Word. <laughs> I was hype. I was like, oh, do you got tomatoes? <laughs> no, I, it's still not. I, don't, I still don't see it. It's episode 1255. It's in here. So. Let me ask you a question. Would you guys consider the the exception of basically accepting 
what happened out in California where they decriminalized basically uh, pedophilia. Wow. Uh huh. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean they decriminalized it? it? They brought it down to a misdemeanor from a felony. Wow, that's nuts. I think that's crazy. Didn't I, wasn't I just talking about somebody talking about how this was going to happen? That was yeah, the end. Got, the gay marriage is there. I've been saying it. Nigga. We have, I think it's recorded. I'm posting it already. Of me saying it when it first happens. Like, yo, this is, those, this is what's going to happen. And nobody wants to admit what a slippery slope is. Right. You know? I mean, some of them are, are, are not legit. When people say slippery slope. Like, oh, you just, you're over-exaggerating. And people thought that because there was pedophilia and uh, there's, marriage is going to be redefined not uh, with one man, one woman, like it used to. There's going to be polygamy soon, I believe. All that's going to be sort of fun. <laughs> yeah, all that. I mean, this is, I can't believe it went to this. I feel like that's so like far, that. so far. So far, so fast. It's deep. It's deep. You know, because it's his home. You know, we we all have kids. You know, it's like back. You know, it's like oh, what what uh, you know, it's, where are the where are the boundaries here? I was reading something earlier about uh, somebody posted. Who I, I like, I deleted. You know what I'm saying? I just deleted the dude because uh, from basically you post. I deleted them on Facebook. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, that word delete that is uh, very. I annihilated him. He doesn't exist. I annihilated him. <laughs> I spoke up on fucking that guy from the Marvel movie. Thanos. Thanos. <laughs> So yeah, hear that? About I, pedophilia? No, he was like, uh, what he wrote basically a post about what Satanists believe, and it was like, oh, when we say we're Satanists, we don't believe in Satan; we are just atheists. Like it was some dumb, like really dumb, you know, like you might not know what you're standing for in all reality type of deal. Yeah. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand what they believe. I, 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 uh, oh, yeah. We we understand because we understand the philosophy. Uh, yeah. But I, I know exactly what whether they know it or not. Right. You know, they're they are fighting for things. Right. <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Yo, so that kid, Kyle, did he really did shoot those people, nigga? I saw the video. I watched, uh, I watched actually a few people break it down. One guy broke it down a little way better than some other guy. The first guy I thought broke it down pretty good, but there was another lawyer. He's um, a prosecutor? I forget what he is. A defense lawyer? That's what he is. He's a defense lawyer. So he's like, you know, my job is basically to fight the police in court, you know? Um, so he's like, you know, he, he comes across uh, um, self-defense arguments all the time because, you know, people fight against the cops. So that, think about it. If you're fighting against the cops, if you're not doing anything in your head, you're self-defense, you know? I mean, and a lawyer's job is to literally stick by their client regardless if yeah, they're right or wrong. Exactly. He's not guilty even though he may be. But um, I, did you see that they uh, started a uh, donations for him to raise two hundred and fifty thousand to support him? I think they already, they already got it. I think. Yeah, I think he's gonna win. I'm almost sure. So if he wins, do you believe then that there is a racial divide in this country? 
uh, there's always been a racial divide in the country. Because a few videos back, we can go where you did not believe at all that racism existed. And you were no, telling me to go back. That racism exists. <laughs> no, racism exists. I said systematic racism doesn't exist. Yeah, but remember, if yeah. racism exists, then they know, mind you, in a 2020, you know, post civil rights era, of course, we're going to deal with a systematic racism. We just have to realize what that is. And, I, I, you think, know, I think I think with the the the, the mix where we're coming to, I define systematic racism as racism that's embedded within the system. Right. So it, so basically, it's saying something like, if you commit this crime, you'll be charged this way if you're white and this way if you're black. Like and it's going down that in the system. But we see that in history. <sighs> I mean, I'm like, like okay, we, history, but I'm talking about today. Today, that's, even today, like uh, just the other day, there was a kid that had the same, like synoptically uh, matching up to this black uh, black kid, this white kid and black kid matched up synoptically when it came to offenses, right? Um, white dude got three years, black dude got life. Yeah, yeah but I mean... You got to think about. It. You got to look at the case per case. Like you got to look at not just. No, that's that's know, what I said. Do they have? Do they have a history? That's why I brought up the synoptic case. Yeah. The cases matched up synoptically as far as offenses went. Yeah, but I'm like saying, every, is, every, what about the offenses? Have, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about when I say offense. Their history offense. Their offense history. Uh, okay, led that's down. only one part, right? So you have to look at the history. You also have to look at who's their lawyer. If you have one of those free lawyers, they also have to be the big. So you got to look at skin color? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You're right. Because that's what I'm saying. Like, it could be racism. But maybe <laughs> not. But, but maybe not. But I mean, what, what I'm saying is the laws don't say that. Individual. No, no. Which is funny. Um, that, that was, that's the whole argument. Is that the law is uh, very malleable. Uh, and it's malleable. We see usually it's favor. You understand? The what? Like we see it's usually in favor to the white race. Like okay, we see conviction rates of whites, but as far as sentencing times go, as far as uh, you know, so many different uh, things you can see. Um, almost to make it makes it seem like these things are almost done deliberately to throw in the black face that oh you know but look at what whites are going through uh, you know it's like it, it, that's what it, that's where my conclusions have brought me into brought me to when looking at uh, you know these. You know all these different, uh, uh, you know, injustices. In my opinion. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, you uh, you have to. I have to like see case for case because somebody maybe have a good lawyer, some people don't. These these lawyers, I don't know if you've been arrested. When you get arrested, what, like in central booking, they'll put you in this thing where it's like you sit down on one side and the other glass is a lawyer, but that lawyer has like twenty five people there. He's dealing with. Yeah. And as soon right. as you go there, the first thing he says, "All right, this is what they're gonna offer you, and if you don't take this, yeah. you're gonna go to jail for this long. What are you gonna take?" And you're like, "Oh, I don't want to go to jail for, for that long." So, so, so what I used to do. So check this out. The way I used to get through to that, um, I had a friend who was a who's who is a lawyer, right? And there was a time where I had to sit behind that glass and speak with a lawyer. That's my privilege right there. I wish That's I had that was a lawyer. Right, my my friend that's a lawyer. He's actually uh, a, a Hispanic. Damn, so, he got through the system without getting. He got, <laughs> he, got he got through the system, bro. This there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on here right now. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lawyer that made it through. Well, his advice to me was basically, okay, look, when talking with a person that's representing 
20, 30, sometimes 40 people, you know? He said, what your job to do is, is to stick out the most and make your case the most important case somehow, convincing this guy why he should truly help you out, right? Dramatize as much as possible. Sit there with him as much as possible. Know him as much as possible, you know, in that time. He's like, and a lot of the time you're going to see that you're going to have favor because he's going to represent you in a different way, not like you're just somebody in all reality forgot who you are. Because you yeah. only sat with him and told him just a little bit, sound bites. Yeah, like but, some, but I'm saying that some people don't got to deal with that crap. Some people just pay a lawyer and they're good money. Like this, this no, white yeah. kid that, that shot the guy, right? He's going to have a lawyer pay for in full. I was just giving the advice as far as if you have to speak to a legal aid, you, that, that, that's our best, our best way of getting through that scenario, you know? Yeah. So that, that and, white and, kid is going to have the best lawyer. He's going to get off, bro. I'm telling you right now, he's getting right. off. Yeah, but I mean, is he getting off because of racism, or is he getting off because self defense and he has a good lawyer? I mean, you said it right. You said lawyers, plural. You know, yeah, a lot right. of that's what I'm assuming. Yeah, a lot of time us, you know, we're coming from single parent homes. We're coming from, you know, in the 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 colored community. You know, our community. You know, we're we're dealing with majority single parent homes in our 2020, real, you know, reality. So, um, you know, when it comes to funds and, you know, we're like excited when we get enough for one lawyer. Meanwhile, these guys are coming in with five lawyers, you know. I, I know, that's what I'm saying. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how many lawyers. So people, I don't know wait, how wait, many. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He just, Jose, Jose, he just made my point. What I'm saying is that us, we're going to have one lawyer if we're lucky. The white right, right. person is going to have two or three lawyers. So when it comes down to the two cases, we might get life. They might get three years because we we have less lawyers than them. They may have a freaking team. So I, right. that's what I'm saying. It's more than just racism. It's the fact that they have a better lawyer than we do. Well, this is why when we say systematic racism, we're looking at a very macro perspective of racism, you know, as far as um, – you know, certain things leading to another, you know, when it comes to the single parent home understanding, the, the, you know, welfare system, the, you know, the, it, uh, like if you look at it all in a nutshell, you recognize that it's all to basically cause um, us to have very unfortunate situations uh, or outcomes in court, you know, I don't but, think for I mean, one second. When it comes to stuff like that, when it comes to stuff like that, a lot of that is our fault, right? Well, we no, because we a lot of No, you see, hold no, on. No, because right. when, when we look at the civil rights when it was passed, right, there were very many, many, remember, we're talking about the majority of the country is white, right? So a lot of the things at that time in particular were just like during 18, you know, 65 when, or 64, whenever uh, the Emancipation Proclamation came in, you know, uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, that clause that's in the 13th Amendment that states, you know, unless, you know, except, except convicted of a crime, you know, that, that clause that basically preserves slavery um, in after 1965 or after 1968, I think it was, civil rights was passed. Just like that slavery was preserved, uncivil treatment was preserved Keep as talking. well. I gotta go outside. <laughs> this guy. You don't know how to have a podcast. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, I, like when I say a lot of us have things to blame, my grandparents, all of my grandparents, were born and raised in Puerto Rico. Yeah. 
they weren't dealing with my, this American my, crap. Man, he's a, <laughs> but I'm saying they weren't dealing with this American crap. You know what I'm saying? Even my dad was born in Puerto Rico. They didn't deal with any of this bull crap from America, right? When they came to this country, my dad started doing drugs. My mom, I mean, my mom was born here, but she was a drug addict. You know what I'm saying? My grandparents were drug addicts on my mother's side. My father's side of the, my grandparents, my, my grandfather left my grandmother, got a blue another lady, kids out of wet lock. Like, none of that had to do with the government. None of that had to do with white people. Right? They're, they're accusing, they chose to do this, and it should go down to us. Right. And, and um, my, a lot of your, I want to say most of my family is in worse position than they would have been if they would have just stood in the island. Right. Right, like I have, um, I remember, I, did I tell you I went through uh, Ancestry.com uh -huh. and I found all my grandparents, okay, like on my mom's side, I found my, my, my mom, my, my grandmother and my grandfather's Ellis Island um, papers. I found on my dad's side, my great-grandparents, that was Island Papers. So my dad was a second-generation Puerto Rican. My mom was the first-generation Puerto Rican that was born here in the United States. You know, so I'm mad Puerto Rican, bro. Nah, I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> I just wanted to say that. So you can I just wanted to say that. <laughs> no, but what I'm, what I'm saying is that there are some things that we want to say racism, racism. But honestly, it's us that we're holding ourselves back. Yeah. You know I'm saying it's like, look, we well, we're the, thank God we're in a place where we have the freedom to, to excel and move up. Like if well, yeah. if we needed a thousand dollars to start a business today, I could get a hundred, uh, ten people to give me a hundred dollars right now to, to get that thousand dollars. How? How? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, now let's say I had a hundred friends. All they got to do is give me ten. Like we have the power to do it. You know what I'm saying? We just don't do it. We just don't have the ambition within us. And that's why I say well, there's people right now today that have the that have the um, the mentality and the power to do stuff, but they're just not directing it in the right direction. You know, so they're directing it into a direction where they, they, they know that's been around them. You know what I'm saying? I see this is the way to make money and that's the direction of money. They don't look right. outside and say there's a different way. Let me let me uh, let me give you a perspective here. Um, now, okay, we have people, you know, who educate themselves, but then we have the majority of, let's say, Puerto Ricans, right, who are who immigrated here to America. In all reality, the majority of Puerto Ricans came here so impoverished that basically they had to make a decision whether it was full-time work, like plus overtime or plus another job, or, you know, they, they try to hustle through school, even though that means missing meals, even though that means, and I, I'm telling you this as person who made the decision to starve myself basically at some point in my life in order to get to college. You know what I'm saying? So I can understand the single mother who said, yo, I have to go to work in order to feed my kids or the single father that made that decision or the, the, the father decided to be the provider so that the kids get fed and the house get clean. You know what I'm saying? There, there's so many different obstacles I felt I started to realize that keep us as the major as a as a majority of our minority situation. You know, it keeps so, us wait, so you're saying this is what you're saying. Yeah. Let me uh, tell me if I'm wrong. You're saying that people choose they come to this country. First of all, their country is not America. They already see America as that's where the money's at, right? So they're like, I'm going right. to go there because that's where the money's at. All right. So I come to America, I work my ass off, or I, right. whatever it is, I go to school, whatever it takes. For me to well, remember, 
going into entry-level positions that keep us at entry-level pays for countless years. Um, but that's, but, with, that, well, but that, that's a decision. That's a personal decision. Doing that. No, you got to – we're talking about – Right. It seems like you don't have to say it, but when you're working, let's say, you know, you have no understanding of how this country works. Yeah. Right. For people that are first generation immigrants here, let's say. Uh, their only means of getting by, it seems as though it's cheating the system. Like a lot of people seem to be looking like they cheated, like they're cheating the system. But what it all, all in reality is is the lack of understanding of why they could have went a better route, how they could have. Well, why, why do we think they're cheating the system? What system are they cheating? Like for example, if, if uh, you know you got people that are like, oh, you know, you come to America, you know, the best, some of the best jobs are. You know, they're, they're, remember, they're coming from, let's say, for example, Me let's say Mexico, right? Let's say somebody from Mexico is immigrating up here, right? They have no clue what America is about, except what they hear and see, whether it be on TV or by their government or by the people around them, right? So word of Which mouth. majority, word of mouth. So majority of the time, it's word of mouth because... You know, that's, you know, they, they, yeah, they, they're, poor, they, yeah. they're poor, you know, they don't got TV, they don't, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so a lot of the time, what they hear from the certain people is, yo, you know, yo, you go up there, you know, you make this amount of money if you take this drug pack with you and deliver it to this point here, you know? I'm on the phone, Can you give me five minutes? All right, good. Just hold that behind me. He doesn't know what five minutes is. Ah, I was gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's funny. I guess my daughter. <laughs> no, that's okay, hilarious so and messed up at the same time. But hold on, hold on, because y'all niggas love. Wait, wait so when he's saying that they're gonna be a drug mule, they take the they they make the decision that they're gonna become a drug mule. Make a shit. Not that they make the decision. They think. It's okay because it's okay to deal drugs. Let's say in Mexico, Mexico, you know, oh, they yeah, don't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's like, it's not a thing out there. You know, um, the way it's so glorified or or, or uh, you know, glorified as a crime out Bro, there. Bro, I don't know what Mexico you're talking about, but it's not legal over there. But it is what it is because it is what it is. Now, right, to, that's what I'm saying. To draw but back out to, here, it's not. It's not. It is what it is. You know, yeah, but it's still illegal over there. But they know damn well they're committing a crime. They know damn well they're committing wait, a wait, crime. Wait, Whether wait, the, the government is lax about it or not, that's not that's not here or there. But they know morally they're doing it right, wrong. They know that they're giving that crack and it's laced up and it's killing people. They know exactly what they're doing. Hold on. You came in mid-conversation. You missed the first portion of what I said. There are people who want to come out here, right? Who basically have no understanding of what America is about, right? So let's say they're 18 years old or 13 years old, right? They have no understanding of how to get it, you know, what America is really about. All they're hearing is from the people around them how they can make it here in America. You understand? So that whole ideology. You know, and mind you, we're talking about poor people who have no education, who usually don't have no understanding of law to begin with. Because, you know, in Mexico, we know a lot of the police out there, et cetera, are corrupt, correct? You know, we, there's a lot of corruption, a lot of, you know, uh, mafia. You can, stuff that, you can say that for over here, too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but not as corrupt, like, compared to right, Mexico. Right, right. Like, no, right. like, Mexico corruption is on a whole different scale. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they, the drug company got their own army. Is this yeah, like, like, their own army. And the army is, like, making sure that the police escort, let's say, 
their top guy to somewhere. You know, like it's so sketchy. So lack of education produces lack of morality. You can't have no, morality no, no, without no. education. What I'm, saying, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that their only understanding of how to make let's say, money. Or to so if you apply that same you know, mentality, hold on. If you apply that same mentality that you're emphasizing now to Americans now, despite the the racial inequalities, um, despite the history of minorities in the Latin community, such as Puerto Ricans, um, despite all of that, uh, what if you apply that logic? Um, can't we now move up and get ahead? Despite the 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 past that we 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 acknowledge happened to us. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. Through the generation, what occurs is a a you know when. No, when but my question is this: people, You said that uh, you suggested rather, um, and I'm trying to get clear. You suggested rather that without no, education, no, you don't have morality. No, so no, no. I'll, I'll, let me put, let me let me put the question like this: The people who are rioting and 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 breaking and destroying businesses, uh, are they uh, educated enough? Let's are they educated? Another, hold on. Please. Are they are they educated enough, or they don't have morality? Do you need both to have morality? Well, this is this is where I'm working my way into because this is an analogy of what I'm trying to get at, as far as you know, the recognition. Of, you know, recognizing you were wronged, right? Like, for example, the person in Mexico that was told, yo, they don't know what they got in this bag, let's say, for example. And they're told, yo, look, you want to make some money? We're going to send you into the United States. You're going to give this bag. Don't look inside of it, because if you look inside of it, we're going to kill you, et cetera, et cetera. Your family's not going to survive. You know what I'm saying? They bring you, they're like, yo, we're going to take you to this location. Somebody's going to come pick you up there. And then, boom you know, uh, you deliver the bag, you make money, you know? Now, a lot of the time in Mexico, that's the case. So when the person gets caught with the bag, right, they're the ones that take the fall with the drugs. So yeah. they're, they're the mule. That's what the, that's called, the mule. They're not going to send the main person or anybody, you know, associated they're going to send somebody with hopes and dreams of going to America, you know, to make a living, the American dream, you know? So what happens is, you know, they, they fall for that. And a lot of times they get caught. And what happens is now they realize they were wrong. You know, they were wrong. You know, they were, they were, uh, bro. They deceived. realized that the minute they made that deal, they said America for this bag, yeah, yeah. We'll take the bag. Come on, bro. Stop that. Hold on. Um, Hold on. I, what I'm going back to is getting back to is let's say the civil. Now, when we go back to the civil rights era, you know, a lot of laws were preserved in order to treat people uncivil, treat people of color continuously uncivil. There were, in other words, the same way in the Thirteenth Amendment we see in. 1865, around there, right, when the Emancipation Proclamation was given and, you know, slavery was abolished, they managed to preserve slavery under the clause, under a clause in the 13th Amendment, which states, except if you're committed, uh, convicted of a crime, right? So it says that slavery is abolished, uh, n neither slavery nor voluntary servitude. Right. Um, I, except, I don't know about you, but I kind of agree with it. I think that if you commit a crime, you should owe, you owe society. You, you're convicted of a crime. You owe society. Whether you want to use slavery as the terminology of you, I, 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 I understand the class, program. Like I understand the program Negro Mind. Trust me, I understand your perspective. <laughs> but what I'm trying to help you really. <laughs> What I'm trying to help you realize is that it was it was put in place because just in case you know you get loud with somebody who is of that power to bend that law against you regardless if you're right or wrong. 
I understand. Yeah, but if, if that's only, the case, then they only if that's the case, hold on, hold on. If that's the case, then you can't have the First Amendment. Now, yo, we have people constantly figure, getting found out that they're doing 40 years. They've done already 40 years. And it turns out they were innocent. Turned out a lot of people that they murdered were innocent. Um, that are of color, not just black. I want you, I want you to realize it's of color because yeah, black, I know white, we, everything. Right. We literally say Black Lives Matter because of their endangered population number. I want you to understand that. It's not because they're the only people that matter, but because just like we got to save the fucking polar bears, we have to save the black race because they're endangered. But okay, but th- th- just you saying that, you're, you're just saying a blatant. Okay, let's just say that's true. Let's say they are in danger. We we can't yeah. say, oh my God, they're in danger. We got to do this. What we got to do is take a second back. Okay, why are they in danger? How did they get there? And we can't just uh, say, oh, they're in danger years, because black, black, black people are killing them. 100 years of killing, white people killing them? Yo, and it's, you have to yeah, recognize. But, yeah, but there's, more, it, there's more black people today than there were back then, right? What? No way. There's no way, Jose. Right no. now, I'll be fine that out. we're talking okay, about so 1860. What is it? 1865. Hold on. We're talking about. Remember, back then, we're talking about before their enslavement. They were a thriving society, just like the rest of the world. They were, you know. Uh, 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 you know, they're, they, Africa's a big there country. Were two, there were 37 million non Hispanic blacks, which comprise 12%, which comprise of uh, 12% of the population. This number increased to 42 million, according to the 2010 census. Again, that's wow, awesome. that's 42 million non Hispanic. All right, you found it. I saw it. I saw it when you were reading. Okay, so they so they're not in danger. They're more than today than they were back in the day. I think what you're saying. I think what your point is that their growth is stagnant today, right? That meaning like there's oh, no they're not growing stagnant. exponentially like most. Yeah, that is Right. So what they well, uh, no stagnant means like they, they're not getting bigger or smaller. They're just stuck. They're just like they're not getting more, right? So the population is not multiplying like they would, right? With, they're stuck at a certain number or around a certain number, right? They're stuck at 13% of the population. Plateau, right? right? But why? Now, my, my, my mentality is most black, black population, the majority of the black population live in cities where the um, abortion clinics are focused. Abortion clinics, more Statistically speaking, in New York City, if a pregnant a, a pregnant African American woman, a black woman, whatever you want to call it, if you see a pregnant black woman on the train, statistically speaking, she's more likely to get an abortion than have a baby. Right, right. So now that, I'm assuming. Now I know that from New York City. Also, yeah. the, also the the violent rate is higher in the black communities, right? Forget yeah. about forget about the criminals. Just focus on the victims. More victims are black. I don't uh, care. What, the let me ask you a question. What was you remember the first? What was the first showing? Public showing. What was the first? Uh, tele like a, a movie showing in America. Do you remember the name of that? The first, the first movie, movie. Yeah, to be displayed here in America. The first movie or the first movie in the White House? Because the first movie in the White House was a movie was a movie called Birth of a Nation. Right. Right? Okay, that was a Democrat movie about the KKK. Correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Hold on. And we can look it up if we don't know. No, correct. You're correct. You know, okay, and I, I know that's to be a fact, but I don't understand. <laughs> that was no, but after the... Wait, wait, wait. I want you to think as far as where I'm going with the understanding of systematic racism, as far as it, it wasn't even, and mind you, 
Hollywood is ran by a Democratic uh, party, right? It has always well, been ran by well, yeah, most Democrat. for the most part, yeah. I wouldn't say Democrat, I would say left. So, so in Hollywood, we see throughout history the portrayal of the black in a kind of you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, barbaric or whatever you want to call it, you know? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And, and but as, time, right, as time progressed, look at what they did to, let's say, for example, hip-hop. Hip-hop, you know, originally it wasn't about what it became about hit Hollywood. Until okay. it hit Hollywood, I'll be there, right? Uh, like the okay, hip hop. Uh, the the origins of hip hop, in comparison to um when hip hop hit California, uh-huh. right? Yeah. California, we see originate what they call gangster rap, right? Yeah. But before that, it wasn't about any of that, correct? What do you mean, the hip-hop? Yeah. No, New York, what, what hip-hop, hip-hop in New York, New, what was hip-hop in New York wasn't really about um, beef. They did have that, but that wasn't the main attraction. The main attraction was yeah. us as a people, we're empowering ourselves, look what we're doing, where it's about yeah. us, you yeah. know, our community, our small community, and look what we're doing. Like, this is, we're just pumping each other up. Right. Look at my so man. Get, you know what I'm saying? Right. It yeah, was like, exactly. oh, yeah. right. Look, you know, look, look at what we, I wish if I would do right. that again. What? You know what I'm saying? And that's only because we have a New York perspective. When we go to the rest of the world, Middle America, do you know what the majority of people are listening to? Country? When it comes to hip hop? Um, when it comes to. <laughs> Right. When Whatever it comes to hip hop, it's pop. Right. Okay. Let's say Drake, for example. Drake, and you know, we have to look at their inspirations. Where are they getting certain um, ideology, ideological conversation? You know, um, we look at we look at the history of hip hop, right? And a lot of it changed when the West Coast brought up a lot of that that wild gangster shit. You know, Ice T was wild. You know, he was he was talking about yeah, some that, shit that that really polluted the black community in all reality. No, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. I think I mean if you go back to the interviews they did back then, they were rapping about when hip hop got to them. They were rapping about their lives. This is around me. This is what I see around me. Right, right. It did pollute hip hop for sure, right. but because the pollution reality, started from that, that neighborhood. Was the same thing that was going on with us, but we wasn't talking about, you know. It, that's what exactly. I'm trying to say. When it came to hip hop, you know, what it became when it hit the West Coast, because remember, we're talking about like in in my understanding, you know, I'm looking at it as most likely, you know, um, the Hollywood. Scenery is what polluted the black race in our right. day. In, in our, uh, it, it, in it, it polluted. It further polluted the black community. You know, in a big, I would say that murder rates were not nearly as high. First of all, black on black crime wasn't even a, in, in a thing. You know, before, you know, you had black on black crime, but it wasn't like, nigga, what's going on in Chicago, New York City, Ohio, you know, everywhere around this country, like, we see people of color literally, like, hating one another. You know, you know, like, it's it's, it's, it's not tribalism. It's what, it's what we all do. My neighborhood is better than yours. Gowanus is better than Whitecourt. 
We all do it. It is though. Nah, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, but but that, but I'm saying is that's what we do. We do that. Like, all people do it all around. Jail. You go to jail right now. You got your. But that's your all. Stuff. That, that's now. That is now. We weren't. We weren't thinking, yo, my plantation's better than your plantation. No, we were like, yo, man, most likely I'll see you in this plantation soon. You know, uh, God bless you and your family. <laughs> you know, it was more of a different conversation as slaves in comparison, you know, to the to the uh, pollution of our perception of freedom. I, you know what I think it is? I think me and you agree for the most part when it comes to racism. I think what our disagreement is, the impact. I think racism has a big impact, but I don't think it has a bigger impact than government programs that were pushed on minority communities. I think that was the biggest bomb to the the minority community. But for you not to recognize that that was racially motivated is what scares me because then it's like, yo, what's racially motivated though? What What program are you talking about? A welfare program was racially motivated. Uh, yo, like so many different things were racially well, I, motivated. I know that's, I know that's racially motivated. Separate families. So you get what I'm I saying? Mean, so, know, it's like, but then the the thing is, I mean, I know it's racially motivated because the person that passed it said so himself. And exactly. He's doing right. it for the black vote. Right. But Even the, the, the racism, the, the racism part, to me, is just like okay, that was just a side note. The real problem is the fact that we we took this and it changed. We forced it. We allowed it to change us as a people. You know, same, mm. same thing with drugs. I don't care who bought the drugs in the neighborhood. I'm not doing it. Right. If they bring crack in my house right now, I'm like, yo, you got to get out of here with that. I'm not going to leave it in my block. You know what I'm saying? I'm not touching it. It's right. because making that decision that we're going to take it and we're going to do with it. Yeah, but that goes back to the you know, um, people that are educated and sensitive. And then there's people that are like, you know, it's like, if I don't do this, you know, I don't have the education to do anything else. You know, it's like, yeah, but that's what I was saying last time we spoke. Last time I said we spoke, there has to be at least a few of us that, that we have to all band together to be like, he's smart, let's get him out of here. He's going to help us, he's going to help the rest of us get out. Yo, but we don't do that. No, We're crabs no, in a barrel. No, we pull no. each other down. Yeah. Joel, have you seen um, Uncle Tom? Did you get to watch it yet? I didn't watch it. Have, I, I, I actually have, waited. Yet. I want to also watch it. So I got like. Have I you got watched like the real half, Uncle Tom? I got like halfway <laughs> through it, and um, I, I mentioned it now just so I can cut it in the the clip. I have it showing, so that way I know exactly when to throw it in there. But um, a lot of the things that that I hear exactly what both of you guys are saying. Um, and I tend to, after, especially after watching this, there, there's still opportunity. It doesn't change the fact that there are some individuals that, despite what they've gone through I know, generationally, that, I, I, they've I'm come not, up. I'm saying, yeah, I'm not saying there's no opportunity. The opportunity is out there. What I'm saying is, is that we're held down systematically so that the majority does not see the opportunity. Wait, wait. But you what I'm saying? Well, okay, so you're saying the system is holding us down. What I'm saying is that the fact that we're doing stuff ourselves to interact with our system is out I get, I get, I hear what you're saying, my brother. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Love I, 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 shalom, shalom, shalom. The day. Nah. But no, you know, like, I, I hear what you're saying. I get that portion. I, I, I understand that. But you have to recognize the majority thought process. Like, for example, the majority of people don't, you know, they, how many people in c- communities of color do you know that sit there and read books, right? Is it a lot or few? Very few. Very few in comparison, right? Yeah. Now, because we know it's very few in comparison, we have to recognize that's why we have the the the, the understanding of let's say when people say to each other, "Oh, like if you're if you if they feel like you're selling out 
they call you an Uncle Tom, you know? Because yeah, but the white man that, that just not the white man's fault, right? We're doing that to ourselves. Oh. No, I want you to I want you to recognize what I'm saying as far as in this small portion of history, we're talking about sixty five years of civil uh, no 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 it was sixty five years ago Emmett Taylor was just killed, you know. Yeah, but what um, does that have to do with two sixty year old kids? One of them sees one reading a book and he goes, Oh, you're trying to be white. Well, he's hardly never heard of any of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's why. That's why I'm trying to explain that there, the majority of people of color are systematically held back from that. You know, many teachers don't care in the New York City school system if you are passing or failing, but they'll they pass you. They want to check, so they'll pass you. So because they have to meet a certain amount of kids to pass anyway. Yeah. But that's when a right. concerned teacher really pops up, these kids are way below their grade level. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, I get it. It's true. Gotcha. You know? And, and and majority of my teachers, for example, I, I had very seldom did I have a black teacher, a uh, Hispanic teacher. Majority of my teachers were white. And literally did not care if we were in the class, you know, we were reading, and, you know, we were just literally doing what we thought was best as children. Yeah, but what, what you're saying right now is what I was saying before. These are programs that the government trying to quote unquote help us, implement it on us, and forced us to be in these schools. Right. We should right. have and that's part- this school over here, this bad school. I don't want my kids going to there. What I want is a voucher saying, look, I can choose whatever school I want. And when I bring that voucher to the school, the money from the government goes to that school because an extra kid goes to that school. That's how it should be. We can weed out all the bad schools like that. Yeah, but I'm bringing up the scenario of New York City schools where they were zoned into going to the school. school, even Even you guys could agree that those programs, even you guys could agree that the numbers, like for Latinos, for Blacks, of success from then to now has increased. Maybe as oh, not as much as, as, you know, one would have thought those programs would have, you know, generated whoever's fault it is, but there's still an increase in numbers. The question is, where do you go from yeah. there? I'm, that, pretty and sure, that's not, I'm pretty sure that's not. your parents I, didn't tell you about voting. Any of y'all niggas? Nope. Nope. No, but that's, that's where I'm trying to get to. But now we're nope. doing yeah, it, right? Now you're passing that on, right? Yep. So, but, so we could agree that that's it's on the individual yeah. level, but this is the society we live in. But on the individual level, we could progress. And then collectively, if we all decide to take that route, then we could collectively progress from our situation because we're given the opportunity. Right? Well, see, this is my thing, too. Always, every time I talk to somebody about how can we improve? How can we improve ourselves as a people? They always say, "Okay, but back in the day, blah blah blah." It's like, yeah, but we're never gonna get to the point of moving forward if we keep looking back. We just right. gotta push. I get that. I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I point out all these different scenarios because I wanna. I, I'm hoping you guys can recognize what it means when people mention a systematic racism because well, no, i'm you showing you a, you got me i'm just a, i'm just past looking at um the 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 issues i can't change and looking what i can change and okay beautiful that jose said and, that right and now my thing is this, this is what i say so that we can change and, we can do this. And like, for example, but like for example like if i see the why i understand something as systematic racism right but you guys have not really put your minds there so I feel the necessity, the, the, it's necessary for me to, you know, show you guys as much as possible until you guys can realize, you know, See, but why. See, my, my thing about that, Mike, is that there are, too many people trying, there are too many people trying to teach that lesson that you're trying to teach and not enough people coming up with I, solutions. I understand. It's not about, not even that. Remember, look at, look at for example, because let, history is so important. How many people escaped slavery during Frederick Douglass, when Frederick Douglass escaped slavery? I don't know, but I know Google knows. 
was it was it a lot or or a few? Let's just use that terminology. Um, I mean, what, what do you mean by a lot of few? I want to say probably thousands. Thousands at that time, you're saying yeah. freed themselves? No, no, no. I want to say thousands tried to escape. I tried to thousand left. Right? Yeah. right? But I, now, I too. Frederick Douglass, right? Being an educated black man. Educated, how, educated by a white how, woman. Hold on, no, no, no. He was educated by teaching. He, he would outsmart the white kids in his community to teach them everything that they learned in school. When they were going to school, they would come back from school yeah. and he would be sitting outside for them. And, you know, the books. yeah, no, he would, he would trick them into borrowing books, into, uh, you know, learning a lot of different things. So later on in his life, what occurred was, you know, he basically learned the system that was against him and how to truly free himself. And what happened was is this. Now, him, he was one of many slaves who educated himself to, to overcome slavery. But the problem then became the slaves were so many and the educated were so few, and the educated black people were so few that there was it, 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 it was improbable for him to free anybody. Okay, wait. Uh, so, I don't I don't know how much education you need. I don't know how much education you need to say this guy's whipping me, and I want to get the hell out of here. I don't know how much education you need for that. I don't think you need to know how to well, Let me let me ask you guys. Let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Let me ask you this question real quick. It's sort of like the same job. Years. Hold on, hold on. That was practice. Do you for think 400 years? Do you think that uh, uh, Donald Trump's presidency brought out, uh, caused all this uh, divide and brought out the issue of racism, or do you think that it was always there, just underlying? And it, it was, was always there. Trump, yeah. Trump was put it like this. Right now, we're only saying that because Trump's president currently, but. In the Bush era, or let's say Bush Senior era, Were we you know, as there was racist all... when Obama was in the office. Were we yeah. as racist as uh, when Obama was? In... Were we as racist then as we are when, now? When you, when you say when you say we, who are you speaking about? I'm talking about the, the whole America. right now. The world is looking at America like these. Um, they're going back into the. They're going right back to the civil. They're walling out. It almost looks like a civil war out here. The whole world is looking at us like that, bro. No, I I the understand. Planet that. Earth <laughs> is looking at us dealing with the issue of race, right? Right. My question was: It like this during Obama? Yeah. 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 It was. Yep. Yep. It goes because all the way, bro. We we're that's what I'm trying to explain. When so when Obama Trump, was being so is elected, Trump's president. So is Trump's presidency exposing it, or is it? It did it bring it out? Did it make it more? No, it's. I think always, it, I think it, it made it more. I, I think I think it brought it forward more. Okay, wait, wait. wait. It goes back to what you were saying as far as eventually. Right, things are going to start to go up. If it, because of the time in between civil rights and us being being able to become educated, you know, in the same ways, or you know, or or sometimes even better now than let's say the white majority, well, because of where we are. Twelve years. I know, but I'm trying to explain to you historically where we're leading up to as far as Yo, why it's never been a before, bro. Stuck right there. No, no, no. We are, how, can we, how can we improve? I'm trying to explain how we're improving, why we're improving. Um, mind you, at a certain time in history, I'm not sure if you guys know about, let's say, the, the, 
black Wall Street out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that was, you know, thriving. They, you know, they were creating their own financial stability, their own wealth, their own, you know, system, right? But because it, lost them. it, the minority race. We were, they were, we were overthrown by the white majority to right back into shambles. They blew up that whole strip. They, they destroyed. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I'm trying to explain to you how systematically they keep us down throughout history. But Today, we're we're experiencing things much better because of, in all reality, the camera. The camera never lies. The camera can't. The camera never lies. I thought this dude was gonna name a policy or something. This guy's live. No, please. I understand. I understand we say, but that. I, okay. Because of live feed, we see more injustice in our face, but in all reality, it's always been there now we can just yeah. see it now uh more than you all, because... all we all know that to be true oh i think we, i don't think we disagree with that right i mean so i mean i think our disagreement is how to move forward i think that this right? kid that that shot what's his kid name kyle right what's his name kyle whatever yeah the kid that i think that he should there should be I don't... I think that there should be some kind of punishment for for the simple fact that he was 17 and from yeah. another state. I think I think that's the only thing you're going to get punished for, honestly. Really? Whatever the you don't think he, is. There, there's no, uh, you don't think it's premeditated? You don't think it was premeditated at all? I think that's for the no. you don't think side. Had, you, don't think, you don't think he had a certain hate in his heart towards the niggers? I think that that's for the people no. to decide. I mean, if you would have... If he would have said it, I would have. I would believe. Yeah, okay. Come on, come on. I don't think. I don't think he shot black guy. Did he shoot black people? He shot all white guys. Mike drop. Right? He shot all. I, I think he, he shot, shot all white. Guys. Yeah. And either way, whoever ran up to them, they all had masks on, so he wouldn't be able to tell if they were freaking black, Arab, Chinese, whatever. They just got masks on, and it's not like he went out there. Walking in the street, looking for people with his gun pointed up. He was standing there. They attacked him, and he fought back. Bro, it, just because you, you have a gun doesn't mean you're looking for problems. Black rally, doesn't mean you have a gun. He went to a black rally with a fucking machine gun, right? Walking around thing. with this is America. This is America. You could do that. This is America. Bro. That's what I'm saying. He didn't do that. What's wrong about that? Lawfully, what's wrong? Lawfully, what's wrong? Yeah. Lawfully, what's wrong? He's Whatever 17 years old. The, the kid shouldn't have had a gun. He should have been identified. He should have, he should have been identified when he was first, you know, seen with a gun, correct? Just like if, if, I'm down down street, if I'm walking down the street with an open, let's say in Ohio, it's open carry, right? But uh-huh. police have the right to ask you for your ID to make sure you're old enough to carry a gun. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Any nigga holding a gun is going to be questioned, identified, etc. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But they allowed this know. kid to walk around with a machine gun, his hands all over the gun. We know he came there from another state. And so did everybody else that got shot. They were, none of them looked from the window. Everybody came from the window. They know that a majority of the people came from other places. Yeah. Right? Each but, person that got shot was from a different Right? Place. Right. And, and mind you, we're talking about... Look. What we know about the victims. You know? Look. Yeah. See, as far as as far as, you know, 
regardless of, let's say even the victims, my, 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 my sole understanding of why this kid is wrong completely is, you know, I think he's wrong. I think the, the police officers that were there that let him walk are wrong. Uh, why? But why is okay? Each one. Why would each one be wrong? Well, the police, for example, for starters, should have, you know, sought some sort of identification of this kid. You know, see, you know, instead of asking him about his rights and all this bullshit. They were asking Yo, about his rights. Like, no, no, he was talking to them about his rights and all that. Did you see the recording of him before the shooting? Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't a cop. That was just a dude recording. It was a media. Right, right. He was basically yeah. saying that the cops can't do anything to him because it's his right. It's he's not the first, second amendment. It was right. Those are facts. But at the same time, we have to understand they they have also. The, the police officer's job is enforce law enforcement, correct? To enforce yeah, there's a riot going on. The cops, I think, got their hands busy. Oh, so you're going to focus on the? You don't think they should focus on the armed rather than the unarmed? No, what I think they need to focus on. You got this guy standing there doing nothing, and then you got people no. driving down cars. Wait, 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 go to I, my, question, my question was a yes or no, and you said no. Yeah, no. I'm gonna go after the aggressor. If I'm the cop, right? If I see a problem yeah. over here, I'm gonna focus on the problem. If I see a guy standing there with a gun, just holding it there, I'm like, okay, Second Amendment right, there's an open carry state. I'm not gonna look at him because he's just standing. He ain't doing shit. He didn't even point to the gun at nobody. He's not a problem. The problem is this guy over here causing a fire, right? Because I don't know if he's gonna blow up this car, burn down the building. I don't know what. This guy's just protecting his business, which is his right to do. Bro, I, mean, I don't going, know. I don't know what the cops do. I'm just saying, if I was a cop, there's not a just one cop though. There's not just one cop there. We're talking about multiple cops, lines of cops that are making yeah. sure protest is in order. Now, if you yeah. see, they, they lost. Somebody, they, lost, they lost that already. Yeah, for sure. It's it's a lost case, but we still have people even on the side of color trying to find a justification for this white boy and never for the black boys, the Latino boys. We do but not there's no black that. or Latino there that did that. We're more programmed if we're if we're standing on the right, if we're right wing Republicans, we're more programmed to justify the white rather than the colors. I it's, don't know the victims. I don't know if they were black or white. I don't know. I don't care if the kid was black or white. Listen, back back in the sixties or whatever when the Black Panthers went to the to the um to to the state office, the cops questioned them. Right? I think that was wrong. The Black Panthers, that's their right to do that. They will follow the police with guns. And the police had no recourse. They had to let them do it because that's their right. I think it's wrong what the cops do. No, the the same way Panthers. I think it's wrong if they do with him. No, the Black Panthers were not allowed. Eventually, they became allowed because what happened was they, they did something that they knew was going to be a problem, which was all of us are going to stand here with assault rifles. This was the plan. They stood there with assault rifles, but the cops didn't know that, one, all their guns were empty. They had no well, bullets in the gun. Well, actually, the problem was they went inside the building, and they went to the wrong room. The room that they went to was the actual Senate chamber. And they're oh, okay. there. The yeah. Second Amendment doesn't apply in there. No, that's, it's, that's that's a, it's like America, it which I allowed to carry. No, no, I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm just uh, saying you just said there was a problem. You said there was a problem, and I'm trying okay, to explain. To you. This is my point. We try to find the no, 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 you're not listening, bro. You're not listening. I said the problem okay. is they made a mistake. They went to the wrong room. 
If they would have went to the other room, I don't think it would have been an issue. They made a mistake. The problem was that they made a mistake. Who's they? The people that walked into the door. They, they the went into the wrong room by accident. Which the Black people? Panthers. The Black Panthers walked into the wrong door. Listen to what I'm saying. They planned to go into a different door. They went in the wrong door. So because they went into the Senate chamber, automatically everybody was like, wait, this is lawful for sure, but we never considered this. We never considered that somebody could come in here with a gun. We never, it's lawful. They allowed them to be in the building. It was lawful. So no, they, they were all, in, that's when everybody was on high alert. Like, oh, snap, we never thought about this. Because technically it's not illegal. It's not illegal for them to do it. At the time, it wasn't illegal for them to do it. So technically they were lawful to do it. So when they were asked to leave, they left. I think if they would have went to the top area where they were planning originally, I'm I mean, talking I think about it would have been a... Look, I think that they, we're talking about two issues here generally. The one issue is that the, the, the individual, the, the, the citizens that go out to do wrong, they're doing wrong, period. Yeah. That's not to say, that's not to say that the repercussion of that should be seven bullets in your back. That's not what I'm yeah. saying. Okay? That's right. That's not what I'm saying. But let's be clear. Issue one, if you're committing a crime, you're drawing attention and you're drawing attention to yourselves and there's repercussions according to laws we agreed upon, whether you were part of it or not. This country agreed. Your chance was available to you when you, when you were asked to vote. Whether you did or didn't, you lost your opportunity then. That's issue one. Issue one is that you're committing a crime, you're going to pay some, something if you get caught for doing that. Put that aside. The other all issue, right, all right, let me, the other, hold on, the other issue, hold on, the other issue here is what the reaction is of the individuals that swore on oath that we pay for out of our tax dollars, what their responses should and should not be. And I think that we, can all, we could all agree that the individual cops that Eric Garner, uh, Floyd, that we could agree that those individuals that through technology, like you mentioned, uh, Mike, we could agree that those individuals while upholding a badge and an oath violated that trust we bestowed on them. So we have to address how the, we have to address how the law enforcement, the individuals that we employ, we have to address how they interact with the people we have to address accountability but just like we have to do that with them i think and i feel that we also have to do that within ourselves as the people and I hear, addressing, I hear what you're saying. addressing point, racism I, you're never going to solve it but there well, has that's to what be, i'm trying to explain there has to be some you're, kind of middle ground there has to be some kind of middle ground or there isn't but the fact of the matter is, you can't take away this entity that we employ that protect us from one another, from those who wish to do harm. All we could okay, do is me... form accountability. And if we're not drawing more attention to that and trying to solve racism, we're missing the opportunity we have available. The opportunity that was made available through the sacrifices of individuals that weren't willing. Okay, let me let me address a few things in what you said. I, w I want you to recognize, you know, a lot of the time when you speak, you say things like, when you when you're speaking of, let's say, the side of the law. You know, you say we, and then when you're speaking about people of color, you say you guys. I, I've 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 heard. <laughs> I, I want you to see you know, through the lens of a different lens. I'm trying to get you to see through the lens that, the, the, that uh, Malcolm X tried to define for the black community. Um, when it came to the house Negro and the field Negro. And the, the importance of that speech was, 
they both have an issue. Both both parties have an issue. The House Negro and the Field Negro. The 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 the, the issue um, with the House Negro was how in you know how how much he didn't he, he loved his master more than himself right where to the point where he said if the house if the master was sick he would ask his master are we sick you know he would he would ask the master are we sick or uh, he actually said is he sick <laughs> you know but rather than you know the 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 field negro who would feel like if the master was sick would be like man i hope this motherfucker dies so i can get the fuck off this field you know because that's the that's where we are in history we're hoping that a certain generation just dies off because in all reality we're never going to get off this field unless that generation dies off there's a certain racist generation that is still alive and actually in power today. That has I don't think we disagree with you. A lot of hate in their heart. Yeah, I, look I, at I, look at I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't disagree. I don't think we you. disagree. I don't, I don't. No, we definitely don't. And when I say when I refer to you, I'm, I'm referring to myself, but I'm referring to myself in the we and the here and the now. I I personally wasn't a house Negro or a field Negro. I've never got, no, thankfully, I've never had to deal with that. You feel me? Like, I hadn't, didn't have to deal with that. But my ancestors did. A part of, a part of, a part of my, my a part of my existence was annihilated. A part of our existence. Don't know it because, like you said, our existences are, have been annihilated. Completely. We are 400 years of injustice, indifference, you know? Yeah, but even but, then... You know, I, think, I, think, I think this is what I think is happening. Listen, this is what I think is happening. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. Mike is trying to say us and we have them. I think what I'm saying is we have us. That's all we have. We don't have them at all. It's us together. We have to work this out together. We got no choice. If we don't follow and abide by these rules that we all set, we all agree on these, these rules. If we don't follow them and we don't say, hey, you broke the rules, you got to pay the price. If we don't do that, we're going to have chaos, bro. But we have to do that. I don't care if you're black, white, I don't care what you are, bro. If you break the law and you get caught, because that's really what it comes down to. If you break, break the law and you get caught, you got to pay that but price. How, how many really know the law? How many people of color really know the law? Listen, if you're burning down a building, you know that's wrong. Just like how the, many just black like people? The, hold on, hold on. Just like the Mexican that took the bag of I don't know what to gain his freedom. We're going back to the question of morale and education. And I don't think you need education to know right from wrong. I think that inherently, you know profoundly whether whatever your background, whatever your knowledge, whether that's street knowledge, hood knowledge, book knowledge, college knowledge, Whatever it may be that what you've learned through interaction, through being alive, you know when you're doing right and you're doing wrong by others, period. But, but that's what I'm saying. You got people that are saying, hey, I know this is lawful and I'm going to do, I'm going to step right up to the line where there's law, right? I'm going to come right to the edge where it's almost illegal, but I'm not going to cross that line. But then you got other people that cross that line. The people that cross that line and get caught and get in trouble. The people that get right up to the line, like, I'm not going to break the law. I'm not going to do it, but I'm right at the line. So we look at the people that are up at the line and be like, yo, look at him. Look how close he is. That ain't right. You are well, you know, unlawful. I'm yelling at Yeah, I mean, a lot of us are on the unlawful side, not recognizing it, and still saying, that guy is wrong. You know, and mind you, we're talking about a guy that's on the same line of wrong as us when it comes to... Um, you know, being on the wrong side of the law, number one, and two, being on the wrong side of the race. So hold on. So hold on. In you these situations, would you say then the 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 saying that goes on, uh, two wrongs don't make a right applies? 
no, the the one that goes three rights to make a left fly. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, nah, but uh, what I'm saying is, is that the the what 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 I'm saying is is the uneducated mentalities, you know, the uneducated recognition, the, the recognition of not being educated correctly, is what I'm trying to point out. You understand? You think as far you need to as, be educated to know that throwing a rock at a business, at a McDonald's, at a store, you think that you need to be educated uh, to saying, know that that's not right? To be educated, to be educated in the uh, certain understandings in specific topics, because you can be if people educate themselves in many different ways. You know? Right, but specifically but, in this topic, throwing a brick window at your local um, bodega. Um, Specifically, this this specific you need you need education to know yeah, that that's wrong. Called, understand, this is called civil unrest. Civil unrest. These are civil issues we're discussing. You know, people that are just are being treated civil are saying now we're going to behave uncivil. You understand? And it's almost like a like you said a, a you know two wrongs don't make a right type situation, you know, and that's what Martin Luther King spoke about, you know, why there was a, you know, the need for a peace march, you know, but at the same time, it's like, you know, all these peaceful marching, you know, lead back to what Malcolm X was trying to say as far as it's not working, you know, we need to do something. And a lot of people are hearing that yeah. as well, you know, uh, I mean, I'm, I, I speak from a Martin Luther King understanding because I understand where he was leading. You know what I'm saying? I understand w why I remain peaceful. You get what I'm saying? Um, but there's a point where we, where civil unrest is acceptable, right? I don't think we're there with this last shooting. I think I think the I keep going back to it, but the main there thing was, was that oh. point. That's what I'm saying. There was a, a even before the '92 riots, we had uncivil rest. Um, uh, there were many riots that occurred before 1992. We're talking about 1992 was important because this is this is now recorded in on live TV and showed across the United States during a time when now majority of people have a television. That's why that became so relevant and, uh, you know, uh, important to more uncivil rest. You understand? And we see, mind you, not just black people, partaking in this uncivil rest. Just like we yeah. saw in the March, Martin Luther King's marches, there were white people too who stood by the black men. Because yeah, they the see riots, they were looking for white people to fight and to beat up. Specifically they were saying it. Is he white? Grab him. Joe, so let me ask you a it question. Do you think that uh, you think that Trump is you think that Trump is that, gonna win guys? That, that, wait, 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 no 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 we can't speed past that because <laughs> that right there that right there, what he just said, was propaganda. You know, that was not the majority of situations that were happening happening during the '92 riot. Okay, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it was majority of them. I'm just saying this is what happened. But that's what this I'm trying to happen when a lot of the time, what they do is to try to whitewash, is take a situation and blow it up and make it seem like this was the point. This was what. No. It looks not at all. Too. Nope. This is, no, yo, that's Nothing exactly that what the is. No. No. no what I'm saying is this. But what, what I'm saying is this. Nobody's whitewashing it. What what I'm saying is the ninety two riots were, Bro. were right. Correct. I agree the, with that hundred percent. That movie we were just talking about, um, Birth of a Nation, was yeah. blowing up that all black people are are rapists. It, was that the case in the whole black community? No. No, not not at all. Just like all black people want to beat up all white people? No, that's not the case at all. If if 
if the tables turn, my biggest question is, do you think black people would enslave white people? If given the opportunity, I think a lot of people would. You think if given the opportunity, a lot of people would enslave? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, well, wait, hold on, hold on. You think that there's no racism? I, I, I only listen. I only say that because there's more slavery now than there ever was in history. So we know that people today are willing to do it. So I know no, there's more prisoners. There's more prisoners in our country than there was during the time of slavery. Is what you're trying to say? And that's what I, I agree. It. I mean, I think that's I think that's right. But there's that's more slavery why, in the world. And there was well in the world, if you say in the world now, yeah, but understand you're saying in the world now, because yeah. the world saw what happened when they had when the when these people had slaves in our country. Our country slavery started didn't start slavery, bro. Our, slavery started in Africa, in in, in uh, Greece. They had slaves in Ireland way before America. Yeah. Yeah, that, well, from, you know why there's not, you know why there's not a, a lot of African uh, or a lot of black um, Arabians, because the, so the Arabians used to castrate the slaves before they brought them to the country, so they wouldn't reproduce. Right, right. I I, I understand so, that. So history. all of the more more black slaves went to went to Brazil than ever came to America. Right, South America, you know, was yeah. we know. A big port like for uh, Puerto Rico so and, and is, what I'm saying is, America. I mean, we're talking about America because we're here, but more so. Right. I mean, around the world, there's slavery. Today, there's slavery, right? We, yeah. we. It's like some of it is America's fault. You know, saying in uh, Libya, that's our fault. That slave trade is taking place because we decided to kill Gaddafi, or better said, Hillary right. decided to kill Gaddafi, or whatever. Whoever was in charge of the trigger, um, Obama. I, I, I don't. I don't know. What's the? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. Wanna, yeah. I don't know for that first time. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why they would do that. I think it was under whatever, the Obama administration. So, uh, I. I. I want to blame Hillary Clinton, so that's what I'm choosing. Ah, uh, um, yeah, that's fine. She's under there too. <laughs> what I'm saying is this. Um, just to go back to the to the original point. Listen, we have us that we have to make decisions whether I'm going to do this the right way or I'm going to do this the wrong way. If you want to do it the wrong way, that's on you. I hope you don't get caught. And you know what? If you if, if there's a way I can help you without me breaking the law, I'll help you, son. Like, I want to look out for you. You look out for me. We work it out. But as soon as you get to the point where you start breaking down businesses that somebody, you know, spent their whole life saving up money to buy, they burned um, uh, a firefighter's bar. A firefighter, he saved his entire life. He built a bar. They burned it down, and he's done. You talk about a man that saved his life, a firefighter that saved lives. In fact, this guy was black. I don't, know, I don't know if that's important, but I need to say it. But he said his entire life, he worked his entire life saving lives, and they burned down his, his bar, and now he's asked out. But nothing to do with him. Nothing to do with him. One of the, the, the businesses that got burned down was a car dealership that replaced their sign with a sign that said Black Lives Matter, and they still burned it down. So people are not eating because of race. They're just burning shit down because they want to burn shit down. I'm, I'm sure some of those people that are burning stuff down are white people doing it. I'm, I'm telling most of them are white people doing it. But that's not the word that's out. The word that's out is Black Lives Matter while we burn this down. So just like you're saying, the movie, the KKK movie, uh, Birth of a Nation, that they made people look like, oh, these black people are racist, racist. We're doing it today, holding a Black Lives Matter sign while we're burning down businesses. The rest of the world is like, look, they're burning, look, at, look what they do. They're burning businesses down. That's what they do. And look at this poor white kid. They beat mm-hmm. him up and so he shot everybody. So he's the good guy and these are the bad guys because it's obvious. I don't even need to be an expert. You take a step back and now, you watch what's going on. They're burning businesses down. This guy's defending businesses. And now all of a sudden, now who's the, who's the hero? Everybody's calling this kid a hero. I, I, I hear, I hear your, your, your complaint. Now, <laughs> I want you to recognize something. We're talking about a civil unrest here that is occurring right here in our country. Granted, we're seeing things on camera done. Um, but I, I, I recognize how much of that is not even in comparison 
to what was taken from a rape. Well, when? When we gave him freedom? When America said, yo, let's give you freedom. I'm talking about in American, in American history, what was taken away from a specific race. Okay. Well, I, I mean, none of that, I mean, to me, whatever, that's, that's whatever you want to say about that. But I'm saying today, this, in November, there are people going to vote. White people are going to vote in droves. I guarantee you there's going to be more white people that voted this election than ever been to this year. Because white people, either they're going to say, burn this shit down, or they're going to say, defend this. This is our property. Defend this. And we're right, not going to be in the middle. Because our vote is so minority, we're not going to have no say. Right. That's right. That's how things are whitewashed. That's what I'm trying to how explain. That, how wow. that thing, that's how things are whitewashed as far as, for example, uh, like I was saying about uh, the f- abolishment of slavery being preserved is a whitewashing. It wasn't like it's over. It's not over. It was never over. It never finished. It never yeah, see, this is this is my 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 disagreement with that. Man, wait, 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 you guys are still saying, mind you. I heard Jose say earlier that okay, but I'm okay with slavery people being punished for a crime. You know, I think I think personally, this is where I defer from the conversation completely because in my perspective as an individual, right? I see things from a Christian perspective. You understand? I see things from a Christian perspective. So in a nutshell, I see things like when it comes to certain things like slavery and punishment, you know, I, I, I put that in the Lord's hands, you know, so, so in all reality, it's hard for me to accept you know, the ideology, the ideology of slavery of any kind, you know. I agree yeah. with. I agree with. I agree with the idea, but not the wording. I think the wording it needs to be taken out because the wording suggests that there is no compensation, even in the system that we have now. Whether it's the greatest or not the greatest, the system is you. You create a. You you commit a crime. You pay the time. The fee of that whole process is a debt that you incurred by committing the crime. So the fees for the judge, for the people to leave their jobs and get paid $40 for the day to sit there and decide whether you're innocent or not is a debt to society that which you owe when you're doing your time and you're being separated from society. You're being, you're put in, you're being put in a timeout. And during that timeout, you owe society a debt. Mm. And not only that, but to run those facilities, you decided that you all need that to do it yourself. All that you're saying, those are ideological beliefs. That's an ideological belief system that has no weight when it comes to, you know, the, the, like I was saying, my perspective as an individual, you know, no, you're entitled to your, I, I, your perspective. All I'm saying is that this right, system right. that we have is just, it is fair. You do the crime, you do the time, and you pay society it, it, what you owe society. Oh, now, it, whether you want to name that, just, whether you want to name that slavery, just, I would say that's a little and, reach. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't call it slavery. I would No, that, it is slavery. I would call that just it's called, a uh, like, when you're enslaved, you're, you're when you're imprisoned, you're subject to involuntary servitude. You understand? You are now a slave to society Again, because you the wording is wrong because it wasn't involuntary. Your ass committed the crime. 
but now you're subject to involuntary servitude, right? But it's so not what happens is now, that's why I say the wording is wrong. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to understand something. Not everybody is guilty. No, and that's why the our system pr- is imperfect. But it's based for the people. Right. You it's just based, said it, but you based, just stated it's, it's just it's just it's the most just system because it's based on the people deciding it's, based on evidence no, and well, the people you decide see that, that 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 is the mo- america has the most just system for what for prison no the most just laws to say something is just we're talking about infallible law no it's not do you think I, I don't think that i don't think that's a good definition at all I don't think you should ever get entitled to the law. When you're saying just, when you say just, just is fair. The, fair. It's the just, most it's fair system. Fair. It's the not most fair. fair. Just infallible. Just, yo, that's an infallible perspective. To say it is just, the Lord claims to be just. It's the most just system that exists in this planet right now. Yeah, there's no it way, there's no way we're going to get accountability. There's no it way. It's not perfect. That's not true. It'll That's never be perfect. not true. It's, bro, to say it's the most just system in the world is flawed, is a flawed statement. Right now? I, 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 I don't, I, the idea I don't behind know, it is... I don't know. I can't say for the whole world. I don't know all the principles. I can't America, say it's the most just. America, but I'm saying it's pretty fair. Yo, how about, how about in comparison to uh, Amish... Laws. I knew. I mean, I knew he was gonna go white. There's no way you can go black with it. African. There's no way. You have to go white. I mean, Ethiopia. Let's say Ethiopian Christians. I mean, let's go to Africa if you want to go there. I don't know if you I don't, don't know think if Ethiopia Christians have their own system. I don't know. How, I don't know how it works out there. That you have to look into that because I, I you would need to understand why I do not believe. I mean, look. We let, let's think that's what, what, let's let's. Place. Let's think for a second how this works, right? You commit a crime, right? Whatever the crime is, I don't care what it is. You get arrested, obviously, because you got caught or whatever. You go to the now you gotta be tried by eight people from your society. Bro, America judge. America has twenty five percent of the world's population imprisoned currently. We also commit a lot of crimes out here, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I commit a lot of crimes almost every day. Oh my gosh, but that's failing to recognize that just what I'm telling you, you guys are are justifying your master's actions. No, these are actions that we all agree on. No, no don't we, don't weep me, my nigga, because I am not a part of my master's house. I don't want to okay. be in my master's house. Yeah, I hope my master does not exist anymore. So if somebody breaks in your car and takes it, you're gonna be like, "Well, that's my master's rules." So he took my job. The master's rules are gonna arrest him. To this day, I'm 29 years old. I never called the cops. What? Okay, so what are you gonna do? Is you gonna let them keep the car? I ain't never called the car. I go get a new car. That's a fact. <laughs> okay, well that's that. There you go. That you live like that. You. I don't know. You might want to move to Ethiopia with the arms. Yo, nigga. And and let me tell you something. I fight for what's mine if I'm there. You get what I'm saying? Well, if I'm well, there, rare, rare breed, I'm defending my house, that, I'm defending my family. But understand, I, 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 I am a rare breed. You sound like that white boy I, with the gun, bro. You sound just like that white boy with the gun. No, not at all. I don't. I no, he like wasn't me. defending his shit. He wasn't defending he wasn't. his shit. What was no, he, he wasn't. wasn't. You saw the video. He, he said, I'm standing that nigga here said, defending it. Yo, he was standing in front of a burnt down place talking about he's going to defend that place. What was he doing? Running around with the gun way outside of where that place was. He wasn't standing in front of that place the whole time. He was on the block, bro. The same block. He, I was, just, I was, the, bro. he was running you around gotta, with that gotta, gun. Intimidating. You gotta relax, bro. He was running you gotta around relax, with that bro. gun. Intimidating people. Whatever That's it is. I don't care how you feel. If I'm defending myself, I don't care how anybody feels. Yo, was it I don't his care if you feel intimidated. This thing okay. Okay. I don't care about Look, was it. What his I care business? about is my legal right, what I can do. Do we know if it was his business? What I, Wait, wait, but no, no, I want you to understand. It wasn't his business. Telling, he was helping I'm telling you from my, I'm telling you from my perspective, as far as where I stand, I've never called the cops once in so my life. Yeah. What I'm saying I've never gotten anybody arrested. I've never, yo, 
man, yo, look, I, my thing is this. Thing is this. I, if you if if you're if you're driving, God forbid, with your family and a drunk driver hits you, you want that nigga to go to jail, right? That nigga needs to pay the price. He needs to lose his license. I want that nigga to pay for my car. I want that nigga. I, that nigga's gonna pay for all this shit. because I don't. Unfortunately, he's just unfortunately, unfortunately, in that situation, cops are gonna show up regardless, right? Well, yeah, whatever. Yeah, cops, you don't have to call the cops. We don't have to call the cops, right? You hit my car, I could be like, yo, give me Wait, 50 did bucks. did you just my, say my, my, unfortunately? My, my, my. Did you just say unfortunately? Oh, I say unfortunately because, you know what? There are cops in existence. Me, I, personally, I say unfortunately because I can't get out of my car and, you know, knowing my family has been passed away, you know what I'm saying? God forbid something happens to my family in that situation. You know, and I'm still alive and I can't, I can't take matters into my own hands. That's an unfortunate situation. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. it's an unfortunate situation. But I'm, but I'm thinking, you want, you want to make sure that there's some laws in place that a person doesn't drive down the street at 100 miles an hour drunk. You want to make sure there's some stability within a society. We can't work. A society can't function unless there's some kind of governing laws that we agree upon. You know? We agree on this, bro. Every law that's out there, I, we, I mean, if you name a law and that's if you just, don't that's agree about it, there has there's to be laws. a system that you should be able to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. What I've been saying, like I said in the beginning, bro. You guys, if we you want guys to change the law, we can do that. You guys say we agree upon, but I, I don't put myself in that category that y'all putting us in. I, because in all reality, I don't see neither one of us, in all reality, being in agreement with uh, the fairness of our children being stopped and frisked for no reason, walking to school. Getting knocked out by police, get, you know what I'm saying, yo? And, and, and that was just stuff that we agreed with, right? Oh, uh, come on, now it's unjust. But before we agreed upon all those things, oh, no, no. But this is what you're missing, yo. I, I this never is what you agreed do. You do that my time. child should Jose, be. hold on a second, Jose. Yeah. Jose, hold on a second, because Mike does this all the time. You take a big That's group just... and you group everything. That's all I'm telling you all the time, yo. You gotta have nuance, bro. Some laws are good, some laws are bad. Some laws are horrible, bro. Some laws are legit, and we should all agree on this. There's some laws that I'm like, yeah, I'm down with that. I don't want nobody driving down my block 100 miles an hour drunk. I agree with that. That's, I'm, I'll put, put my name on that list. I agree with that law. I don't want nobody doing that. I don't want somebody running in my house, robbing my house. I agree with that one, too. Boom. In fact, if somebody, comes, if somebody comes to my house banging on my door, then that they want to freaking kill me, I want to be able to call somebody. Like, yo, can you come get this cat, please? He's walling. I agree with that. All right, go ahead, boom. What I'd rather do is have the gun on me, but unfortunately, the state I live right now, they took that right away from me. I don't what want, I'd rather I do is have the gun so I can open the door and back up. I don't want Get people up. in the streets naked. But, so wait, 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 wait. You guys are saying, wait, wait, you guys just clarified what I just told you. As far as you guys saying that we have the most just system, but you guys have pointed out multiple things that were done unjustly to you guys I in never, particular. I never said this is the most just system. You can go back to the you guys I never said that. No, that would Bro, be me. I, 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 I say my world. opinion is that this is the most just system. Um, you know, justicia. In the world. The, the justice, the, the goddess of justice. You know that symbol? You know, she's holding the, she's holding the scale. Yeah, yeah, the world and then she's off. holding yeah, the sword. Roman. You know, uh -huh. it's a Roman know, cartridge, right? Um, 140 AD, something like that. Whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. saying that it's not a perfect system, but it's the system that works. And look, it's working so much that it's drawing out. Rooted, oh, it's hold on, it's, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's working so. No, 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 no. It's working so much that it's rooting some of the most uh, evil some of the most racist, it's rooting out some of those most profound things that need to be rooted out in society now here today. And it's going to be I through this we system defer. that we okay. address it and we bring it to light. That's the okay. whole point of this. Okay. Okay, then, then if you put it that way, then I can see where we defer. Um, you know, personally, like I said, from my perspective, and maybe this is where you know what I'm saying? You don't understand my perspective. 
and where I I I stand. In, because back then we didn't why. have back then we didn't have um as many black Latino in the system. But now no, we got no, judges I, out I, there, we I, got lawyers I, I, out I, there, I, I, we got professionals out there that are taking the stand wait, wait. and helping helping uh -huh. us the minority out. No, you wouldn't agree with that, Noel? Wait, 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 wait. No, yeah. uh, hold on. Well, hold on. That's that's. I, I want you to understand why I completely disagree. You know, um, you're you know, not you hearing what I just said right okay. now. You have no, a I whole lot it. more. Did hear again? Do you agree that back then there were uh, more lawyers, black lawyers, and Latin lawyers defending the people, us, versus now? Were Our, there more or less? Okay, let me ask you a question: Are you a Protestant or a? Uh, Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a Greek. I'm a Greek. I'm a Orthodox. I'm a Greek. But... Actually, you know what? No, I'm Ethiopian Christian, man. What up? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bah, 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 bah. And that was my purpose of bringing up this question, is because in early times. We know Roman rulers and such as like popes and kings and queens, right? They, they stated things like eliminating the Protestants. Uh, one of them even said, uh, what was it Pope John the Fifth or or I forgot? It, I think it was the Fifth. He said eliminating Protestantism even if that means becoming a Protestant, like basically infiltration, right? Yeah. Um, in our, our societal understanding in Christianity, sometimes we don't recognize how much we've been infiltrated and, and we're infiltrated by people that want nothing more than to enslave us. Uh, want more than nothing, want nothing more than to enslave society in, in, in a whole, but mainly to shut up the gospel. Things were put in place to mainly shut up the gospel, such as Lady Liberty, right? Uh, such as, you know, all these anti-Christian understanding in, in, in all reality. And, and I know a lot of people become just that, what I was saying earlier, which is, you know, we become so involved in the house of our master. You know, especially when you go uh, you know, let's say as a slave, you know, some slaves went so to so many houses, they went house to house, right? Sometimes they would either be in the houses or in the field, some in the, back in the house, back to the field, right? They'd go back and forth, and sometimes they'd be in a house that they're like, man, I don't ever want to leave this place. It's just the nicest place. But in all reality, they're not considered human. They're not, you know, so what happens to the slave? is conformity. They begin to conform to the situation rather than continuously understand and that this should not be their situation at all. And as a Christian person, you know, there's a lot of things in our system that I feel, you know, if we're entitled to a freedom of religion in this country, I shouldn't I should not have to be subject to uh, Sharia law. I shouldn't have to be subject to Catholic law, Roman law. Uh, I should be allowed to practice amongst my community my own laws, correct? Uh, there should be a church and state separation according to our constitution, correct? Yeah. No, that, that, that's, you can't, you can't, you're, what you're going to say is a, is, is, is irrelevant because of what I just stated as far as my perspective, right? You have to recognize my, my 
Protestant perspective and allow my community of Protestants to deal with me. If I'm a Protestant, I should be able to deal with Protestant community. I should be able to have a Protestant jury. I should be able to have a Protestant judge. I should be able to have a Protestant lawyer, correct? If you want, yeah. If I want, because in all reality, as a Protestant, we're not subject to that Roman. Yeah, but that but that's the way the American justice system works. You could choose your lawyer. Your lawyer no, wants you choose the jury. That's what you I'm trying to explain. I, want Protestant. You, I only want you, Protestant. That's what I'm trying to explain. In early Christian, in early America, in early America, that is not how it works. Okay, in well, early America, America, like you, you yeah. in early, that's that what I'm trying to say. Back to back and back today, back. today, today, America is not America. Today, America is another Nazi Germany. This is this is total rule. It's it's what we say goes, and that's it, niggers. But who's saying that? Uh, I, Nobody's saying I, I, I that. I never I never heard that. Nobody's saying that. Nobody's saying that. Y'all just said that. y'all said that. Y'all said yo, my my religion, my freedom of religion don't matter. My freedom of religion don't matter. My my religion shouldn't. My religion is underneath our government is beneath our government. No, nobody no, ever said that. No, bro. no, absolutely not. Yo, in this country, no, no, our not. laws. What what I'm saying is that so where, what I'm saying well, is hold on. I want to hear what he gotta say. Yo. I'm yeah. curious what he's saying because I, I don't think this is the first time we bring up religion at all, really. I'm just curious I know. where you got I that know. from. I, 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 because I want you said you wanted to have a Christian conversation this time and I felt like you know it, it's true. You and I have been debating this whole time and 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 not really connecting because we're not speaking as as brothers in, in Christ. We're not recognizing. Okay, I think, the, I, think every, not, I think I think in Christians we can agree with a lot of things, right? Yeah, but I disagree completely with Roman philosophy, Roman mythology, Roman. But we're not talking uh, about that. No, yeah, we are when we're discussing modern day America. That's what it is. That is exactly what it is. It is a Roman okay, rule. So what, tell me, in the, in the whole conversation, when have we ever talked about Roman mythology? Um, when you brought up Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty? We're, not, we're just talking about a statue, bro. We don't care about what it is. No, 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 no. You, you brought up what she stood for specifically. No, not late. You me? brought up what she stood for specifically. I, yeah, I, I was first of all, I didn't bring that up at all. I, I, I didn't bring Lady Liberty. I don't care I about I didn't those bring Lady Liberty. Don't give me nothing to No. But that was import- mostly important to the conversation because a lot of where we're we're not seeing eye to eye is because of that Roman rule right there, that Roman ruling right there, that 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 rules our country today, that has oh, okay, corrupted what, freedom me, of religion today in our country. Me, tell me when it goes as far as law is concerned. Tell me where that okay. disagrees with Christianity. What do you mean? Where does it disagree? The laws that are here in America? Yeah, where, 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 where is there, where is there thing? Yeah. Oh, come on. That hold on, hold on. You want to do that? Let's synoptically hold up the laws of our, our Bible in comparison to the laws of this country, including its policies, including its regulations, including its so go law ahead, enforcement. Bro. Wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me go one by one. If you really you're telling me synoptically they match up? I'm not saying anything. Wait. I'm asking you to show me that they're not. That's what I'm saying. You're Why? telling me show me where they're not. Where yeah. can you not see that there is a complete separation? Okay, go ahead. I, can I just be clear about the whole... Um, it was not the Statue of Liberty. What, what I was talking about was the idea that comes from this Roman goddess. Don't get scared goddess. now. You go to help that thing. Nah, no. you, go. <laughs> you, go. you better go pray to your God. You better go pray to your God. <laughs> or God, whatever you say. <laughs> I was just no. pointing out the sin. This was the life for my nigga, Pluto. Pluto, when if he ain't doing what he did with the laws of the sea, nah, <laughs> yo, I, I was 
just talking oh, he about. Went, you know, I was yeah. just talking about the symbol that the Justice Department uses. The lady that's blindfolded and she's holding the sword, and then the other hand she's holding the scales. You know, oh, and that's the idea. Roman. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. That it's, that's I applaud the Romans and whatever. The idea that the symbol represents no, don't the Romans. Right, oh, Lord, the, the, I, hold on. The it's idea crazy. the idea the idea the idea hold on. the idea <laughs> the idea that the symbol represents of of the person is blindfolded and they're measuring a scale. The scale is deciding based on I, I, based I, on I, truth. I disagree with you. And then on the other hand is the sword. Right, so this system right. of, of governing, with this system of governing that I a hundred percent I'm stating right now, it is not perfect. But right now, it's the system that we, the people, we whether you voted or not, we the if you're a citizen, we you agree that these are the governing laws that you uh, abide in uh, and with. Show me a better way. You know. A better way, okay. Well, according to the gospel, you know, we're 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 entitled to repentance. You know, we're entitled to repentance. One hundred percent, and that's why there's a separation of church and state. I'm trying to explain exactly and why. You know, I I can't. your relationship with God shouldn't be hindered by your relationship with your citizen neighbor, but they coincide together if you're a real Christian, right? I want you to, want you to recognize the solution. You know, you said, where's the plan? Yeah, what do we and do this is where the plan... What do we do I, This me? is where we're, that's where, I'm, where, we, where we're going. The point of my, my situation, my conversation, you know, to this is, you know, my where I believe it should go, you know, according to my beliefs for my people, you know, and, and because of the freedom of religion, these people are, 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 should be allowed to agree amongst themselves in our country. Correct. There should be a separation. In my opinion, there is, there, there's there's a, a, what do they, there should be a disagreement. Correct. Yeah. And, and right. there should be a separation between what? There should be a separation of religions, for sure, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, okay, it's no problem. You know, because if we have religious freedoms here in this country, uh, freedom of religion specifically, according to the First Amendment, you know, we're talking about, you know, this is my, my right to group amongst my people, and I shouldn't have to um, deal with the the outside perspective because that's going to only bring death to me because I believe differently than them. You get what I'm saying? The outside perspective of outside of my religious perspective. So you're saying you want to separate yourself from America and just live in America? No, I'm saying that within America, within America, because America was founded on the freedom of religion. That is where our freedom is. It's not just freedom. It's not yeah. just free. It was the freedom of religion, the freedom yeah. of speech, right? The freedom to uh, congregate. You know, we, yeah, that but, was but, where, where. Where is that being hindered in the country? That's being hindered when I have a uh, Islamic judge, when I have a Jewish lawyer, when I have, you know, p- basically people that do not see eye to eye with me at all. They don't see my perspective. You get what I'm saying? They're not my people. Yeah. My people are not judging me. So you want a Christian lawyer, a Christian judge? I feel like if we're going to have a solid solution, I think there should be a separation of religious, uh, whether it be condemnations or, or, or judgments or, you know, whatever they believe. And, and You know what I'm saying? Because you're talking you know, about the theocracy? A theocracy is, a, uh, uh, I mean, uh, in my perspective, the best way to go about I mean, it was the first way to go about America. So you want to say, hey, atheist, you have to abide by my Christianity? Danger. No, no. I'm saying that Christians should come together rather than saying, uh, you know, and if atheists 
feel like they're atheists, they should not have anything to do with, uh, you know, this religion here. So you're saying that, that the Christians there. should come together and they should yeah, govern they their own to. laws within themselves and the yeah. atheists within themselves yeah. and the Muslims within themselves. Right. Yeah. But how do you do that with a yeah. society that's mixed? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. That's where the, the discussion has to become So you're global. saying that move people that's, that's, based on their religious so, beliefs? So you're saying everybody go back to your country? Not, not saying everybody go back to your country. Everybody deal with your people but the way you, you would deal with them because people you, who are not a part of your how, people on, are going you, to use how do you do people the, unjustly. I'm in a neighborhood of Hasidic Jews. That's, wait, did and, you say that's a fact? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, You're no, okay, hold on. Hold on, okay, hold on, okay, hold on. I, I commit okay, a crime. No, no, no. I commit a crime on 10th Avenue in Brooklyn where all the Hasidic Jews are 12th Avenue, 13th Avenue. I commit a crime. You're saying that I got to go to Sunset Park uh, where my Christian Latino brothers are or just my Christian people to get judgment on an offense I committed yes. to another community? How do you, yes. how do you well, suppose your basically. idea that there's mean, such mixes of classes in, the, in every let me, neighborhood? Let me, let me explain. Because if you know you're a Christian and he was a Jew, both perspectives have to see who was truly in the wrong. You know, coming together. I think that's what brings people together even bigger. I think that's what minute. brings people you're saying, together even You're saying that the even. Christian and the Jew can agree on what law together. They can say, hey, look, we both agree this law is bad. Uh, or, or doing this one thing, whatever this one thing is, robbing a store. We both agree that's Christian. bad. The Jew and the Christian both are going to agree on the same thing, right? Robbing the store is bad. I think everybody would yeah. agree almost. But would the atheists okay. agree? Would the atheists agree? Maybe. I think so. They want to protect maybe. their families and stuff. Right? Maybe. Maybe. They're not immoral. Maybe. Oh, no, they're not immoral? Where do the moral come from? Where does an atheist moral come from? Where does an atheist moral come from? All from moral society, comes from, from. Their parents, their grandparents, whoever talks about Come on. Come on. Come on. This is what I'm trying to explain. We're dealing with people that say some things that are right are wrong, and then there are other people that are, you know, that things that are wrong are right. I That's just, their society. I just don't see how so, you would so you never me. met a moral atheist? You never met a nice atheist? A nice atheist? Yeah, somebody that's a nice person, an old lady, a freaking whatever. A regular guy, Yo, you meet him, you yeah. him, you him you I was going to say, I was an atheist. I'm still not nice. Right. I was going to say, <laughs> let's take Jose, for example. He was a dick. <laughs> I'm still a dick. Um, no, no, no. I just don't see how you, know you would implement that. You know what I'm saying, Mike? I don't see how you could implement that that's, in a city so saying. diverse that's and that. dense like New York. You know what I mean? I can see that in Ohio. Yeah, man. Yeah. We yeah, all have to come that, together and agree on things. That's it, the only way it's going it, to work. If we're that diverse as we say we are, it should not be a problem to implement that. Because we should have the amount of people to concentrate and execute certain... Uh, <laughs> but but you're, you're advocating for segregation. Within, you don't no, no, no. I'm not advocating for segregation. I mean, in all reality, yeah, I, I advocate for religious separation. But... As far as segregation goes, no, that's a total different beast. So, so you're saying only for religion? Yeah. I just don't see how you could so implement say, that. I mean, the only ones who I got that down pack that are the Hasidic so like, Jews because they keep together generally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hold on. It's yeah, only in today's society. It's only in today's society we don't label ourselves um, where we stand religiously. Um, but but pre America, uh, excuse me, pre let's say, uh, let me say pre uh, before eighteen hundred, let's say, uh, people were quick to to let you know where they stand and who they stand with, you know, as far as race, religion, uh, you know, all of that goes. You know what I'm saying? You do that. Nah, technically you can't because you know there's certain things that. You know, uh, because the judge is, let's say, an atheist and, you know, he decides, you know, what's fair to him is a life sentence. But in comparison to if you would have had, let's say, a Christian judge who would have gave you, let's say, a year, three years, or maybe the Christian judge so would have gave you life. 
So or we can figure this out. We can figure this out right now. We can figure this out right now. We don't have to think about it. We can find out judges, find out their religion, and find out how <laughs> they um, how they um, judge their cases. Like what kind of sentences do they give? And we can look at the difference between a bunch of Christian judges, a bunch of Muslim judges. I mean, I don't know how many Muslim judges there are, but we can see, you know, Jewish judges. We can see if religion plays, how much of religion plays a factor. Because as far as I understand, they take an oath of office. They're like, I'm going to only judge you by these laws, whether they go against my religion or not. Did you watch the, the, the documentary, 13? Yeah. Um, if you would have seen that documentary, you would have seen that there are so many cases right now going on in America that a lot of them are now, uh, the judgment is not by what they wish would actually be the outcome, but by the standard. Of, yeah, You're talking about the 94 uh, crime bill. The 94 crime bill. No, no. Biden's 94 crime bill. You're talking about, I'm talking about what was stated in, by judges in the, thir- in the documentary 13, which they were talking about basically a lot of the time their, their judgments are um, made by statistics. They're not judging cases justly anymore. It's not a justly uh, thing going on within the system because there are so many cases, they have to get to the next case. And this is you're, why- But you're talking about mandatory minimum. No, 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 I'm telling you what the judges here in America So you're are telling me that exposing. judges, they don't hear about the case at all. They're just saying statistically he's guilty, so I'm gonna make him guilty? What, you got to watch the the show the the documentary again. I, so you I've can watched that. it. I know they're talking about mandatory minimums. That's why I keep asking. That's what Hold on, not, not documentary. Mandatory minimums were are that they spoke about mandatory minimums, and then they spoke about what's going on right now in as a judge, what they're doing as judges, what their job has become. They work for. They're like, they were explaining, they were explaining in, the judges in that documentary were explaining that they work for uh, the general attorney or or, uh, attorney general or uh, whoever is like the highest, right? So their job, whatever the perspective of that person is, becomes their rule of judgment. You understand? That's where we are in modern day judgment here in America. So if, if we truly examine America in light of history, of unfolding history, in light of where you stand in your belief, you'll see that you completely do not judge. I mean, you do not stand truly, you truly don't stand with this country at all where we are in modern day you won't and unfortunately we're such in shambles this conversation as far as the possibility of 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 the hopes and dreams that i have as a protestant you know to just be amongst my people you know but unfortunately you know that's not that's never going to happen you know, because but of where I, we are. But, I think, in, but in, also, I, you got to understand, we're talking uh, about uniting. <laughs> we're talking about uniting. As no, not, not America. America is not talking. That's not the discussion of America. Right now, the discussion of America is programming, is, and mind you, we're talking about amongst the billionaires, the trillionaires. We're talking about the people who run the country, who pay for the ads, who pay for the, the, the type of, Things that should and shouldn't be in movies, uh, you know, all these little things to program the poor man, the the, the common middle aged middle class citizen. You know what I'm saying? Middle class. You know what I'm saying? Like in comparison to the super wealthy is insane. By the way, I understand? Yeah, whatever. I mean, you, you're. I mean, honestly, it sounds like conspiracy theory. I'm sure a lot of it is probably true. I was that they yeah. program on that. I think people just doing it to chase that green. That's why I think we, we so it's a conspiracy that we know certain people were told, mind you, we know came out and said things like, 
they were told they couldn't say that because it went against LGBT, because it went against pedophilia's uh, agenda, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure stuff like that happened. That's what commercials are. Right. So it's not a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. This is factual. No, what, what I'm that... saying is this. You're, you're saying that these people are plotting it this way. What I'm saying is society is agreeing on this issue and people are following society it. Society doesn't agree. No reality. This is why there is an uncivil rest well, among this the is nation. Exactly, that's what I'm trying to tell you. There's, have civil race what un- people are agreeing. The people, the people state, not, not just in, not just in it, 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 it's all over the country. Yeah, civil unrest. What I'm saying is that the people that are doing not civil unrest, the anti fraud and all that, not, they're on that side. That's that side, right? They're no, no, it's not Jesus. Bro, it's the majority of the people in our country right now. That that's no, not a, listen, trust me, they don't. The, there is a majority in this country that doesn't agree with any of that. They just not living in the city, so they're not in the news. They're in the quiet areas. The Amish people don't agree with any of that. You know what I'm saying? The community that I was just around that was the past week, whatever, they don't agree with that. There's there's pockets all over this country. The majority of this country is not like that. Hold it's on, just the Remember, city. Because you just stated they're amongst their people. That's why well, the they can Amish. live comfortably. The Amish, they live amongst themselves. Well, they're, well, they, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're living the reality that I know, but you're, you're taking two things, right? You're saying, you're saying they live nope. amongst their people so they're comfortable. I'm saying uh-huh. they don't agree with that regardless. Regardless of who they live with, these people believe this thing and that's the way they are. And that's the majority of the country. You can agree. Your statement would fly in any freaking Trump uh, freaking um, um, events, people will love you for it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what they like. Yeah, they like hearing that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I also see that there's people that anti for them. They don't. They're the ones that are pushing that gay agenda that you're talking about that you want to go against. But these people are the ones that are the loudest voices. I don't think they're in power. I just think they're the ones that are the loudest. Right. But but that's what I'm trying to explain is that because it's not in the public eye as far as, you know, uh, the importance of separation of religion, the importance of that, that's why we have so many people enslaved in our country under the prison system, is all I'm saying. Uh, I, I think maybe you're misunderstanding the separation of church and state. Okay. The separation of church and state is basically saying that church cannot influence the government and the government can't influence the church. Right? Uh, what's that? The, that's right. the, the government should be able to... And I'm saying you can't have that and live on the same block, son. And the, 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 the church can't influence the government, basically. Right? Right. The church couldn't influence the government. They should actually have their own, uh, their own. I, I feel like people should have their own laws in place, it, especially when we have people out here trying to push Sharia law, trying to push. Uh, but you're advocating for them. You're saying I'm not, they should I'm, have I'm that. Not, I'm not advocating for them. I'm trying to tell you the conversation that has to be had that isn't happening. Wait, this is what you said. You said you want the Christians to make their own laws, right? They want their own, their own little society, whatever you want to say, right? But you're also, no, they, you're they, also they because you're advocating they that. Have. Say what? I'm saying that they should have. They, in, that's in all reality. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I said. I said they should have. From, from the beginning, by you advocating for that, you're advocating for Sharia law. Because you're saying they should have that too. They should have their own laws. I mean, in all reality, what, what, what do I have to say? I shouldn't have any, if we are coming to this country with a freedom of religion, that's their religion. That's the basis of Islam, Sharia law. Yeah. I, I have, you get what I'm saying? I, and and that's just, if they believe it, if they believe Sharia it, law, with what I'm saying heart, is, they should follow it. Right, but what I'm saying is Sharia law should not dictate Christian it should not dictate, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Should, uh, but where, where, where is that happen? happening right now? Where does that happen? Oh, yeah. my bad. 
Sorry. Uh, Chicago? Chicago? That's so happening right now. Stopping in Chicago and it's stopping Christmas from doing something? No, what I'm saying is look at the uh, states that um, are allowing Sharia law right now. Like, uh, those, some of those people right now are, you know, I mean, that's what I'm trying to say. There is a complete perversion of of law right now because to say something applies to everybody is a perversion of one's belief of one's individual freedom of religion is all i'm saying okay i'm reading right now the constitution prohibits the combination of sharia law no religious tradition can be established as a basis of laws that apply to everyone including every, any form of sharia Christian, Canon, Jewish, or Dharma from Eastern religion law or, or Eastern religion laws. Uh, laws must be passed in a secular fashion, not by religious authority. The free exercise clause allows residents to practice any religion or no religion, and there is often controversy about separation of church and state. And the balance mm -hmm. between these two clauses, uh, when the government does or does not accommodate any particular religious practice. So basically what it's saying is that there's no law that the, the Constitution goes against it, right? And this is what I was saying before about if there's a law we don't like, we can fight it. All we got to do is write to the congressman, and if we voted him in, like, yo, this is what we want, right? So there's laws that we don't like, and we can say we don't want this law. He'll advocate for it, but they have to agree in the Senate. Every state has to agree to ratify it, to make it law. You know what I'm saying? So we have the power to do it. We totally got the power to do it. But it has to be a law that a lot of people agree on. I don't care if you're Utah and it's run by the Mormons, they can't control this country. Because Do you know, have to agree on it together. But, but what my question was, what are the states that allow Sharia law is my question. All right, I'm going to look at it again because as far as I saw it says none, but I'll keep looking uh, okay, let's look at this one. This says Islamic law is alive and well in the U.S. Let's see, images that are America as a conflict war, blah, blah, blah. American, Sharia's advertisement of Islamic law, after this, we are going to go to the world. Ah, ah. Okay, so this is saying not that it's in the court, but it's private. It's within the, uh, the, uh, the mosque. Everything right. Everything. Uh, and, is... No, and why they did that? Why they did it privately? Yeah. Because and why they wanted to do it. Exactly. And, and that's what I'm trying to explain. We have the right to do that in our churches. That, when you define your belief system and, and, and you know, your, 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 where you stand, that gives more opportunity to a true freedom, a, a real true freedom of religion, number one, and a more just form of judgment. So I'm just going to read out, I just wrote in uh, states uh, allowing Sharia law. I horribly misspelled that. Um, and that basically the, the I'm just going to read out the first few searches. Um, Islam Sharia law, uh, far right group gets modeled, build passed. Uh, it's targeting Islamic law known as American laws for American courts. Another one is a ban on Sharia laws, but that's from Wikipedia. You already know, uh, Sharia laws probably isn't what you think it is. The next search is the network behind the states countering Sharia laws and its implementations. Alabama joins a wave of states banning foreign laws. Alabama has become the seventh state to ban Sharia law via a ballot measure that prohibits its courts from considering foreign and international or religion laws. Ooh, I think we lost Noel. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, but I'm just reading like the first few search results from all that. Um, oh no, it wants me to FaceTime. What's going on? I can't stand my phones. Damn, what a fail. He's trying to call me on my personal phone. That's not going to work, Papito. 
Let me try him again. Hold on. Yo. Yo, hold on. You hung up? No, he's still in there. So oh. basically, that that those are the first few. 13 states introduced a uh, useless bill to ban Sharia law. Um, a little fact, these are the communities in the United States, blah, 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 blah. Ban on Sharia and international laws. So it sounds like there are states that are banning the those laws in the courts and decision making. Go ahead. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is, is you know, that's that's what I'm saying in a nutshell as far as but when we get into race, I think that's where it's easy to become divisive. You know, that's where it becomes divisive amongst the people because now you got Jews and, 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 you know, all these kinds of blacks, for example, all these kinds of whites, all these kinds of Puerto Rican, et cetera, right? You got, but the problem is, in all reality, is the unjust situation of, you know, people not being able to congregate amongst their own people. You know, the Supreme Court was important, is important, because, you know, a, you know, this ultimate judgment sometimes needs to occur within certain situations, but, oh, oh. Okay, you get on a car with the window. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh-oh. So, I'm with you. Where are you Yo, Noel. Yeah. Yo, so uh, do you think Trump's going to win or he's going to lose? I think he has a good chance of winning, you know? Even now? With oh, yeah. Time? He has a good chance. Sure. Oh. And he's white. He has a majority. But so is I mean, either way, the white rules, right? Either, either way, the white man wins again. <laughs> I mean, bro. You gotta also like. Do you we, think that if he wins, in... there's not gonna be unrest uh, even more? That this thing escalates? Oh hell yeah! It's here's hell another. Yeah. Here's it's another thing. Crazy, do you remember? Do you remember uh, some some individuals, myself? We we recorded this before. We were saying how uh, maybe we need a little chaos in the in the White House to shake things up, hit a little reset. Yeah, that's what I said. I want to. I don't want a president. I don't think they should be president. I think that's dumb. There you go. You got the chaos. <laughs> I, I, I think, no, I, chaos. like I said, I, I, I've said this before on the podcast. I think there should be a group of like five or seven people. It has to be uneven, obviously. You get uh, the, uh, scientists, the medical doctor. It goes, goes against your just law that you just said you love so much. What are you talking about? <laughs> what law is that? The American law, the perfect American law that you said is so perfect. I never said it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you guys speak as though it is though and I feel like when I say something that is contrary to what is in place right now listen, listen, I, okay, you've been recording right I, I have been recording but bro I, I agree with you know the, the things that need to be fixed and the issues that we have wait wait hold on hold on hold on hold on what? listen listen you've been recording so everything I said has been recording correct yeah everything yeah. has been recorded okay alright because I never said this law was perfect I never said, I never said that said either stay the way it is I said that we have a we have a way that if we want to change the law, it was unjust. We obviously, it. Yes. obviously, I'm breaking balls, but I'm, <laughs> I'm saying like, you know, <laughs> I'm saying like, you know, I know everything that I was saying that you, as far as what you were in disagreement with, I felt like we were in disagreement because of the the un the conversation that just wasn't there which was the conversation that needs to be had amongst, you know, our belief system. Our, well, I, our, I, I think that those people writing go against our system. Yeah. Well, right? well reckon, that's what I'm trying to explain. The people rioting right now, you know, we have to recognize it's going, the things that they're rioting against go against a lot of systems that the rioters, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so but did Martin Luther the King, and he never broke anybody's business. He never tore down the streets. Yeah. 
Come on, man. No. Did you hear about what happened in Selma and 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 uh, Birmingham and yo? First of all, they would be there. They didn't exactly cause right. They didn't cause right. They were. They were. You're proving this point. You're proving your point. You're, you're proving no, your point uh, what I'm saying is the, the rioters just were at that time the police officers, <sighs> right? Oh, in no, reality, no, 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 they were protesting, and then the police fought back with force. That is wrong. Right. Absolutely they began wrong. to riot. The police, that's, that's not a riot? Yeah, I guess. But you they're call wrong. It what, what, it's wrong. It's more right, wrong. right, right. But see, if it's black people, it's easy to use the word riot. Uh, well, the thing uh, is, that, I mean, that's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, there, we, we have. Uh, okay, so what. what okay, now we're we getting in the weeds here. Now we have to define what a riot is. Right? Well, another thing I was going to say was chaos, that most of those riots are being done by down. white people. Did the cops do that? Uh, the cops weren't killing, beating, hanging, etc. Yeah. That's not a riot? That's not right? I think they were using excessive force, and I think they were wrong. I don't think it was a riot. I wouldn't call it a riot. I think that oh, they wow. were wrong. I think their tactics were bad. I think all Look. of them should have been punished somehow. I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't define it as a riot. A riot to me is like unrest. People burning stuff down, breaking stuff, but no apparent reason at all. Yo, look, That's a riot I'm a, to me. People I, think, I, think, I think this conversation, we should uh, put the money in to uh, have it uh, marketed on YouTube. Wait, hold on. You guys want to, so make, that, a, you want to make a bet on who wins the, the presidency 2020? $20. No, no, no. We already all know who's going to win. That's not... I mean, bro, it does. the left even knows who's going to win. Like, everybody knows who's going to win. Trump has got this in the bag and has had it in the bag since 2016. Ooh, that's pretty bold. You heard it here first. That is pretty yeah. bold. That is pretty I, 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 bold. I had a suspicion he would win, but I don't know. I, I I know. I, I think my word mark my words. But if I'm wrong, yo I'm gonna be so surprised. <laughs> yo, let's say let's say that Biden wins, right? Here's another question. Is let's say yeah. that Biden wins. Is there peace on earth I mean America uh, again? Does the riot know. stop? Bo- the church is the church is screwed. Oh, that right bro. Is screwed. But does okay. the rioting stop? Okay, let me does all does all this like let die me down? Explain, let me explain let me explain why it won't. First off, they are both in their 70s, which means, which means They're old. they were both their era of growing up into men, into men was pre-civil rights era. Correct or incorrect? I guess. I mean, uh, they, they were yes. born. Gosh, that's just they, math, yeah. Uh, okay, we've only had civil rights for 20, take away. 50, Let's say 75. Let me, help, let me help you. We've had civil rights for 52 years. 52 years? 52, yeah, 60. 68, right? 1968, um, we, we got civil rights, correct? Uh, let me see. Uh, civil rights. I don't even, oh, God, here we go. Let's do Google. Oh, 1964. Okay, so we had it for 68 uh, no, no, 66 years. Uh, 20. Uh, <laughs> I'm tripping. Uh, Stay in school, y'all. 50, Stay in school, y'all. 56. 56. 56. Stay in I said, school, I y'all. First. Stay in school. <laughs> uh, no, so and also, we had a, also, it's not 50. like when the law got passed, everything was all hunky dory. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to explain. So we're talking about people, remember, who even blatantly stated in their history, uh, for example, Biden's history in office, uh, he said a lot of uh, things in his time you you can go back to as far as him calling um, certain communities of color, uh, animals, um, they shouldn't be treated like, uh, there's a lot of old school videos on him and the things he was saying, like hate, really hateful things towards people of color. Uh, I gotta see that. 
I can't. I okay. can't agree with that. Go on, go on YouTube. Go on YouTube. Uh, it's all over YouTube. I mean, you can't agree with it right now because you can watch it, but I guarantee you, once you see it for yourself, you'll see even Hillary, et cetera. Like, all of them in their past have piggybacked off each other's racial statements. That's, a, that's actually a good way. That's actually, honestly, a good way to, to park it right there. You know what I'm saying? Go do the research yourself. You know, see what you guys work, come up work. with. Don't take my you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that each uh, of us have that responsibility to ourselves. Let's just say he did. Let's just say he did. For well, argument's sake, he did. Okay, he's racist. He's done some racist stuff. Okay. All right. Now what? Now what? So he's done some racist now. stuff too. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say. I said both of them are, are, they became men in a very racially divided era. Even and if they clearly did, they're with, still protected under the First Amendment, no? Wait, I get that. They are. I get, they are, but understand something. The that, change, that's right? uh, hold on. I want, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. I think, I think, you know, what most people are failing to recognize is that, you know, this country, number one, I think was tormented for eight years because they had a black president for eight years and it tormented their racist soul to see such a uh, uh, a dark man in office and it wasn't was necessarily black. he was black well what's he talking about his wife what his first his lady <laughs> come on son. come on son. that was his nigga he had nappy straight neck. that's that's but you know but also, and a lot of people that voted a lot of people that voted for uh, Obama twice voted for Trump. So people supported yeah. Obama twice. Yeah. At the end, they said, oh, uh, this guy is... Right, right. So right. you think they're racist? No, what I'm trying to explain to you is this, this, the, 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 where we are, why Trump's in office, why we only have a choice between Trump and Biden and not the young people that were running. The, the young I'm going to tell you exactly why we you don't You mean Trump. the young people like Bernie Sanders? Biden. No, no I'm talking, you don't have enough of us running. I'm talking about Tulsi, or Tulsi Gubbard, which was Tulsi a great Gubbard. candidate. Yep, Tulsi was a great candidate. Uh, Andrew Yang Gabbard. was a fair Tulsi candidate. Yeah. He was fair. Uh, I agree. We agree. He was and, fair. Andrew Yang. Andrew uh, Yang. Yang was a fair candidate. Okay. You know, these are these are young people that I feel like were overlooked, and yeah. I think were were more. Um, in all reality, uh, but uh, they, they were more but Trump was qualified. You know, right? So as far as these candidates are concerned, people that are registered Democrats, it's their responsibility to vote for these people. And, but they it was should, besides, vote they were, but understand something, Tulsi Gilbert, for example, I, I, I applaud and I appreciate she was, Gabbard. she was perceived Gabbard, whatever you want to pronounce it, Gilbert, Gabbard, you know, tomato, tomato, look, I'm saying she is, a, I applaud her specifically because, you know, she went against a lot of what is supposed to be believed by the mainstream, uh, mainstream left wing. And, um, you know, she had a very solid middle ground of yeah. left and right. That's what, that's what she wants. Yeah, and that's what she wants. And that's what I felt like was you know, because of the hatred of, you know, that I feel like Trump brought to America, you know, with his rallies that really made middle America rise up. Yeah, but you just said America's always been like this. America's always been like this, but I'm saying because of... But they voted for Obama twice. Right, but Obama being president, he touched up on situations that uh, the the quote unquote made up by the way made up he made this up ran with it the people embraced it he called it the silent majority he made people feel like they were silent but in all reality this is who they voted for because in all reality he was a very young progressive man who brought a lot of change to America for the in my my opinion uh, for the better um, and and I. Think 
mentality wise like i mean young black girls and, and boys are now able to say yeah you know what i, I think i want to become next president you know and, and and that opened the wakanda under you know uh i mean whatever the wakanda administration yo i would <laughs> if i was running for president i would call it the wakanda administration <laughs> yo that's dope <laughs> but, uh, uh, that's anyway we're gonna end this conversation i gotta go i hope y'all learned something <laughs> <laughs> you took notes? Did you take notes? I definitely took notes. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. I'm, I'm still trying to trying to think how would a, a separation of of religion work out? I I, I okay. personally don't see it working out. That's a lot of logistics. The system we have that's because what if a Christian feels a Muslim? Enough. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, uh, would it be so diverse? Like here, you would have you know? to unite. You would have to agree on something. Yo, you. All right, so I'm a little. We're judging them by these rules. Yo, I'm a hollow for a doubt. We got end it here. It's already three hours in. I think we got a lot of material. People try to eat. <laughs> People try to. Eat. All right, right, right. People try to eat out here. <laughs> Gotta get that bullshit. <laughs> right. Yo, so if anything, right, yeah. we hit this up and we follow up. Right, I know that. We'll do this again later. Like, sure. We're gonna continue. Next thing you called and reinforced. Oh, uh, he in trouble. <laughs> Yo, we oh. out. The basement. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>